Well, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Fly Deck Sim live stream today, the 25th of February, 2024. It's 33 minutes past 18 in the evening here in the United Kingdom. We're back in Microsoft Flight Simulator, the PMDG 737-800, on a two-sector day in the Caribbean. Uh, we are here in Jamaica, Montego Bay. We'll be flying southbound to Colombia. There's a Vatsum event going on at a very small airport in Santa Marta, only 1,600 meter long runway, so some short runway ops. Uh, after a quick turnaround, we're going to do another flight uh, south bound continuing to the capital of Colombia, Bogota, B Bogota, oh no not this again, I remember trying to pronounce this last time we flew in there, uh, but yeah, I'm off at the moment so I thought I'd do a nice little uh, two sick today, two sick today, I'll be finishing probably around midnight in the UK, but it gives a good chance for those of you uh, west of my position or east of my position in the world to watch live, but uh, yes, live uh, here we've got the... Um, uh, Sim World Update 16 scenery by Guy Simulations. This was actually the last time we flew the PMDG 737. We landed here, and then I've got some free scenery for Santa Marta and just stock scenery for Bogota. But yeah, lovely weather here in the moment in the Caribbean. Lifetime live weather. By the time we end up in uh, Bogota later, it will be a night flight. We're going to have to do a tricky RNAV approach uh, into uh, the capital uh, later on, so it's going to be good fun indeed. Uh, first time streaming 2K as well in the PMDG 737. It's looking resplendent in my simulator. I hope you enjoy enjoying the viewing experience as well. Ah yes, the airbridge hasn't quite attached correctly, but a bit of a leap of faith and uh, a bit of a, a sidestep to get into the uh, L1 door today, but uh, otherwise GSX is all connected. I've started the flight on New Sky as well for Alpaca Airways, as I said, both flight time around 1 hour and 20 minutes today. Um, anyway, who have we got here in chat? We've got Hayden trying to help me pronounce Bogota. Thank you very much. Listerman says, hey, Key Largo, Montego baby, why don't we go excellent? Hope you're doing well. Pilot Marcel's here, he says, evening. Uh, Angels Aviation is here as well, evening too. Steph, hope you're doing well. Uh, uh, Edo's here, says hello to you. Uh, Taylor L, Liam Barwick, Fraser Lim, Pilot Marcel, I've said hello to you already. Mike Delta 11 says, good to be Captain and everybody, I hope you're doing well. Uh, Ikri 002, uh, I hope you're doing well too. Nice to see you here over from Malta. Thomas 13, Martin Kiel, uh, Greg Scott, Owen, just to name a few. Owen said, looking forward to some entertainment whilst I attempt to crack on with a uni assignment. Very good, we'll have to see what goes on there. I pilot myself says, oh my god, he said my name. Yes, I always have a flick through at the start to see who's hanging around here. So thank you very much for popping in. Air Wisconsin says, hello, popping in for the stream. I'm the American Airlines all the way on the other side of the ramp. Ah, I think I can just about see you there if I zoom on in. Ah, oh, there you are. Oh, that's a very cool livery air cow. Very, very nice there. But uh, thanks for popping in, joining me live on Vatson. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see how busy the event is later uh, because it is a very tiny airport. I might take a little bit of extra fuel for the first sector but uh, stock fuel is fine what on earth is GSX doing it seems to have put some uh, air stairs in my wing never mind um, MGS1 thank you very much for the gifted membership that's very kind uh, that was gifted to Pascal Hands welcome on board as a member and thank you very much MGS1 for your generous donation nice to see you back here as a member uh, next air says nice time for us in Cali ah very good yes it's uh, what time would it be for you in California about midday I suppose wouldn't it so uh, thank you very much uh, for popping in in Indeed. Uh, anyway, yes, better do some work. So let's jump on into the uh, cockpits just like that. Professional uh, transition as ever, and um, we'll get the aircraft uh, all set up, ready to go. So completely cold and dark. We'll get the battery on. GPU is on the bus. Electric hydraulic pumps we can pop on. Landing gear lever is down. We have one, two, three, four, five, six green lights, and then we we'll check all the aircraft documentation. At uh, twelve thirty, thank you. Yes, very nice. Next care down. Hope you have a nice afternoon. We'll be still around in the next three to four hours. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be too bothered. He's embedded into the fuel tank in the left wing there, but uh, looking very nice. Right, we've got the initial uh, aircraft powered up then let's do some fault and fire checks uh, I'm also going live tomorrow morning in about uh, 12 hours time uh, I'll be streaming in Australia for the spilled milk event as I'm off at the moment I thought why not do two streams in a period of around 20 hours uh, fault test then master caution overheat detect in op we'll do the fire test running the latest version of the PMDG 737 and Microsoft flight simulator there we are fire warning bell light master caution overheat detector and we had all fire warning lights illuminated parking brake should be set chocks are in though that's all set up here so we'll pop the seat belt sign on because i'm going to get the aircraft fueled up now so as i said I would be taking stock fuel if I was flying this sector in real life. Uh, the weather is really nice in Santa Marta. Uh, so let me just find the operational flight plan. Um, 6-2. Um, should I take stock fuel? 
I, I, I know what will happen. I'll take stock fuel and I'll end up having to hold or something like that. And it's not really an airport I'd like to commit to. Very short runway. But the weather is nice. Oh, you know what? Let's take stock fuel. What, what's the worst that could happen on a busy Vatsim event? So 6.2 tons of fuel. Mm. Uh, FS actions, aircraft, uh, fuel. I still haven't figured how to get this working with GSX properly. Um... So 6.2 tonnes, there we are, and uh, payload, I will load from the flight plan. Now how did I do that last time? Wasn't there a way of sinking this into the sim? I can't remember what I did, wasn't it on this page? Oh, I can't remember, it's been a, I think it was when I inputted, hold on, let me just go here, flight plan request, sim brief route, yes. Ah, there we are, so set payload, there we are, the fuel I've already done. So that's all in, and I'll select the route as well. There we go. So the payload should be correct with 6.2 tonnes. Uh, our zero fuel weight should be 58.5 tonnes. So let me just double check that here. Payload, zero fuel weight, 58.5. Perfect. And as I said, I have started New Sky Up. Look, you can see it running uh, here in the background. Uh, should be appearing. There we go. So the flight's entered. Next flight we can do is a charter flight as well, which would be pretty pretty cool. Uh, earn a bit more money for the virtual airline. There we are, route link up ready. You wouldn't usually do it at this stage, I just wanted to get the aircraft fuel and payload in. It's slow, isn't it? Dial-up connection. There we are, I'll activate and execute and tidy it up later. Anyway, uh, we'll carry on with the safety inspection and pre-flight setup. So that's done. Uh, we check the flaps are up, which, which match the indicated position. Flaps are up, they're indicating up. We'll now do the uh, takeoff config warning check. Config is good. Cargo fire test, forward aft discharge, no detector fault, two green lights, fire bell and fire warning light. Down here, 2000 standby on the transponder. Rudder and aileron trim is three and zero. I love that, the actual animation there, they, the, the little uh, metal bar going up, that's quite cool. So when you check the gear extension door, very important that we check this and that it sh it's completely stowed because anyone in chat, what will happen if that's not fully latched after takeoff? If it's not fully latched, see if anyone in chat knows. Circuit breakers are all in, uh, stall warning test, you need to wait four minutes after getting AC power for that to work. Mac SB warning test is good, IRS to nav, EC's on though. Uh, engine control lights, reversal lights, illuminated. Alignment's complete. Very good. Excellent, Listerman. You've got it. Listerman, FMMS, uh, Michael Calder, AV Pilot. The gear will not go up. Uh, touch wood. Not had to do that before uh, in the past. Or I've, never, I've not ever had to return uh, to stand after takeoff and go, why did the gear attract? The engineer would then come in and just push that down and go, you silly... <laughs> silly boy but uh, thankfully haven't had that ever happen uh who else we've got in chat here lee richards gsx should do fuel and payload for you yes it does i've done it before and I messed it up somehow so i still do it manually um i do like gsx a lot and certainly for the immersion of boarding which i'll start now actually but it's sort of like during the pushback the sequence is all a bit wrong uh, and doesn't work but uh, anyway we'll request boarding now um and then we can uh, get the crew on board and, and start going from there. Uh, enter our position already. Very else, very quick. Right, there's no VATSIM here. I got a bit muddled with my VATSIM events. So there is. Oh, there. Oh, hold on. There is actually an ATIS here. One two seven decimal nine. Um, and there might actually be some ATC. Pure clouds at two thousand four hundred. Let's get the weather anyway. Feeling five thousand broken. About minimums, aerodrome minimums, level. Minimums. Minimums. Temperature two nine. Thanks, Graham Young. Welcome, Super buddy. Two zero. Altimeter one Toilet zero one flash, six. Brilliant, Bob. <laughs> ILF runway zero seven in use. Acknowledge receipt of informational pod live on initial contact. What? You have information alpha. Oh, alpha. Do you want to board crew? Yes, please. Pilots boarding starting. This is Sanctor International Airport. Attest Why information I alpha. Starting? Observe at two zero 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 Zulu. UTC. Your crew Expected has approach. ILF runway zero seven. Starting. Transition level 180. 180. Went 040 at 7. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Few clouds at 2400. Ceiling 5000 broken. Oh, they're on QH here. I thought they'd be on inches of level. mercury. Temperature 290. That Microsoft Pat Sam probably had. Altimeter 1016. ILF runway 07 in use. 
Acknowledge receipt of informational pod live on initial contact. You have information alpha. Excellent, so we've copied information alpha. I'm just going to have a quick look on the Vatsim map because seeing there's ATIS here, that might mean there's a sector covering ATC. Uh, looking on the Vatsim map, there doesn't seem to be any ATC here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, you guys know more about it than me. But we've got the latest weather anyway. Q&H is 1016, so we'll set that to uh, hectopascals. Set Q&H 1016, thanks to the B key. Uh, lighting's all good for now, and we would check the oxygen and do a light test as well. That's all good. Perfect. So let's load up the FMC. Uh, anything we missed. So, pause. Uh, we are in Montego Bay in Jamaica. So that's Mike, Kilo, Juliet, Sierra. And we'll pop on the uh, IRS position. Uh, routing's all in. So departure, runway 07 from the ATIS. It will be a Libex 2 departure. That's executed. The arrival into Santa Marta in Colombia is runway 01 via Morgue 1 Delta. And I'm just going to have a quick look at the charts. RMP Zulu will we want to fly today. Uh, via Gegis, so execute. Just check for any discontinuities, and we'll just do a quick route check, check the distance. So, electronic flight bag, route distance is 542 miles, progress says 550, so that's good. Uh, eight meter difference. Uh, Kingston radar's online, 125 decimal four. Thank you very much for the heads up on that, guys. I'll get the clearance with them. I guess they're covering Montego Bay as well. Perfect, so I've pre-tuned that frequency. Uh, perfect, so the FMC is all in. Yeah, it's a very unusual SID here in that it takes you north initially and then back south on a 12-mile arc. And unfortunately, the PMDG after 15 years still can't do DME arcs. So instead of doing a DME arc, what it does, it creates waypoints with straight legs in between them to sort of build an arc manually. I think it's been requested a lot, and they keep saying it's coming, but it hasn't been released yet. But yeah, there you go. It is sort of built the arc using these RNAV points, uh, and then we go outbound to Libex there. So we'll, we'll brief that later. Um, perfect. In it, ref. Let's do the performance. 58.5. The reserves. So to get to our alternate, we need how much fuel? I don't even know where that is. Bravo Alpha Quebec. Is that Barraclina or Bauer? <laughs> I don't know, Bar Barrow Cleaner, I don't know. That's in Colombia as well, but we only need two tons to divert. So I'll put two tons, cost index 30, 37,000 feet for the first sector. Uh, executes, that's in there. It is at sea level as well. Um, the top of climb wind, we can get that from the flight plan. Uh, 275 at 38. And top of climb ISO again, it's still funny in here. Plus 8 degrees, but they want the actual temperature, don't they, after top of climb in the PMDG. So, top of climb, actual ISO deviation, uh, plus 8, minus 49 degrees. Perfect. Transition altitude's 18,000 feet. And let's do the performance in the uh, OPT. So, we press this performance tool. Um, Runway 07 then, elevation, all the data's imported in. Uh, import from aircraft, your weight. We'll take optimum flaps, optimum rating for departure. Anti-ice off packs on, import weather and calculate. So, uh, acceleration height 1,000 feet above the ground. The MSA off to the east is 4,000, no, 2,800 would go over the sea, so we go to 3,000 feet. So that's saying we can take... T01 with 43 degrees, so T01 43 degrees assumed temperature, giving us an N1 of 91.8%. That says 92.6. So when I put the APU bleed on, you'll see this will decrease to 91.8. This figure here in the well. FMC landing dispatch. Then this could be quite interesting because it is very um, tight performance in. Uh, in uh, where we're we going, uh, Santa Marta. So you can see here, if I calculate, the, the quick turn weight is actually slightly less than the maximum uh, landing weight. Oh, look at that. Weight 56.4. That's really restrictive, actually. If I go to flat 40. Yeah, 60. So this is our maximum landing weight based off max manual braking of 61.7 tonnes. If I go on sim brief and actually have a look at what our actual landing weight will be. Yeah, our landing weight is 60.6. So 
This is called dispatch landing performance and we need to confirm that we can land at our destination based off max manual braking and our expected weather conditions Welcome. because it's a very short runway that is saying look based off max manual braking flat 40 your maximum weight is 61.8 our estimated landing weight is 60.6 so it's really really tight you'll see when we do the landing performance later we will need to probably go max auto flat 40 to, to land here in Santa Marta it's only 1600 meters long now, if you're interested for landing dispatch calculations, which are done on the ground prior to dis dispatch, if you cannot meet the, the weight, you can still dispatch. You just need to make sure you have two alternates and not one, and we take fuel for the furthest alternate, and both of those alternates need to meet the landing dispatch landing weight requirements. If you're more interested in that, there's some really good videos on YouTube, but I also have on my EFL or uh, PMDG, oh, sorry, PMDG, um, tablet review, uh, a bit of a discussion about dispatch landing weight. Tamango says, so today's excuse is short runway. Absolutely, that's it. Uh, thank you for subscribing, good men, and Smudge Smith. Both love your usernames. Welcome on board, guys. Um, so that's all in for dispatch landing and then landing on routes, obviously. Uh, all fine. So that's all done. Uh, we'll get the APU started. And we'll just pop on a fuel pump for that. And take off go back to take off dispatch so that was based off flap 5 and the CG is in as well uh, the speeds it suggested 139, 140, 145 so it can accept all those speeds they match bug V2 145 knots there we are so the performance is all completed take off and landing dispatch is all done looks like boarding's completed as well AFO 3310 looks freaking fantastic in 2k yeah it's really clear and crisp for those viewing now so the great news is when I'm sort of in this sit seating position now if I turn on yoke cam hello um you know when I'm landing here you should be able to see the instruments a lot clearer uh, as I uh, as opposed to when I had it in uh, 1080p so 2k I'm, I'm so glad I made that investment right um let's go on to the overhead panel your dampers on nav transfer display switch is normal auto fuel pumps on check the cross feed valve goes from uh, off to bright then dim and then dim to bright and off the fuel temperature it, this is one thing they need to I, it's a really small thing the temperature here uh, is what was it um, made a note of it on the 80s what did I not write the temperature down uh, what is it here? Can't even see the temperature. 29 degrees, but look at the fuel temperature. It's it's only 18 degrees. So this, I don't think, in reality, this would match if you if the airplane, as so long as the airplane's been sat there for a while, this will match the outside air temperature. I don't really see that change on the ground, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's actually slowly increasing. Uh, but generally, when you've spawned in, it it doesn't match. Um, AP bleed can come on in a couple of minutes. That's all set. Window heat comes on as well, even though it's 29 degrees. Voice recorder on. Pax auto. Uh, we need to wait a bit longer for the AP bleed. Flight director's on. Uh, we'll get the clearance in a second. Order brake to RTO. Reset fuel flow. What does that one? Unable next altitude. Can't do 15,000 feet or above, apparently. That's the only restriction in the FMC. So if you delete that temporarily, you can see where the aircraft's going to put you. 14,830 feet. Well, it's technically correct. <laughs> it's unable to do that by 200 feet, but we'll go max rate and see how we are with the, the climb. We might get evicted in a shortcut anyway. Uh, <clears throat> that's all good. And the radio tuning panel's all set. We'll get the frequency shortly. And that should be on VHF-1. Turn on the mic. Perfect. We'll get the clearance and go from there. Um, what else we've got here? Tamango says it's cool. We're going to see a flat 40 landing. What's in a blue move for me? Yeah, it's it's not the default flat landing uh, or landing flap setting. Uh, flat 30 is flat 40. We use when operationally required for performance reasons. So you'll see that today. Um, very good. Listerman said, be ready to hold your favourite pieces of clothing out the window for increased braking. Brilliant. Uh, Christian says, can you calculate in your company OPT? what auto brake you'll use absolutely yeah it'll give you all the braking distances based off every auto brake setting and it's factored at my operator by 1.15 and we must use the factored distance uh, is the bypass an issue Taylor L? Uh, not really um, it's because it's trying to fly too fast and it's going a little bit too far off the, ma the magenta line the best way of controlling that is by reducing the speed but um, you can see look it's slightly overshot this waypoint here 
the way it draws the line isn't quite correct in the PMDG. So if, I, if I zoom in here, you can see it sort of just cuts off. In reality, it would just overshoot and then do a curve and then join back in. But in the PMDG, it sort of just cuts the line. We'll see how it performs today. Uh, as I said, hopefully we'll get a, a, sh a shortcut from Kingston Radar. Um, perfect. Fight, fight, uh, fighter here just says, just curious, do you prefer the modern instruments like MMR or the classic ones? I really don't mind. I generally use the classic ones because it's because I've got the Logitech radio tuning panel, it works well with that, but that uh, makes no difference. All, all the Maxes and UNGs we have have the MMR. Uh, perfect, so let's get the clearance now from Kingston Radar. Thanks for the heads up on that, because I would not... Whoops, just not the frost lever. Wouldn't have known that uh, he's providing ATC. Perfect. Kingston Radar, hello, it's Alpaca 2, Sierra Mike. Band 324 Heavy, contact Bank, Quilla Center on... Ah, hold on, my radio uh, haven't... Uh, because I flew the Airbus... Size stick last time. I need to reconfigure my new push to talk button. There we go, it's working now. Uh, Kingston Radar, hello. Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike in Montego Bay, stand 1 Alpha. Copied information Alpha QNH 1016. Departure clears to Santa Marta, please. Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, Kingston Radar, clear to the Sierra Kilo Sierra Mike Airport via radar vector Slabuck. Flight plan rod, climb and maintain 5000, Rustle, two departures, clock 6734. 6734. Uh, cleared to Santa Marta, it'll be radar vectors towards Livex, climb to 5000 feet, and Squawk 6734, Alpaca 2 Mike. Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, feedback is correct, push start your discussion, call for taxi, information also correct. Roger, we'll go for taxi, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. Perfect, so 5,000 feet, it's radar vector departure, so when we line up, remind me if I forget, we'll go heading select, but we'll leave the SID in the FMC uh, and go from there. Uh, it's always, when you get radar vector departures, I generally leave the plan SID in, so if they change their mind last minute, it's at least loaded. Uh, if not, you just have to reinsert the SID, rebrief it at the whole point. Uh, so 5,000 feet in Squawk 6734. Perfect. So I don't have any interactive checklists with the PMDG, but it should be all configured here. We just need to brief what we want to do. So very short taxi for us from stand number one alpha. So if I zoom on in here, set the airplane icon on. So push back to face west uh, onto the main taxiway and taxi to runway 07. And here's the SID, but he said do a radar vector departure. So we hopefully just maintain heading and then Vector towards Libex. Uh, oh, sorry. Did you say a Ro Rosto 2? Radar vector. I thought you said radar vector departure. Is there a Rosto? Ooh. Yeah, hold on. He did say Rosto 2, didn't he? But I didn't read that back. You know what? I will put Rosto 2 in then. I wrote that down. I don't think I read that back. What I'll do, I'll put Rosto 2 in then. Execute. And I'll just join, join the discontinuity. There we are, so we'll do, we just simply drew, drew in Rondo. But anyway, it will be vectors, and then we can just update it from there. Uh, cool. Um, so, push and start on discretion. So, let's get GSX up. Uh, prepare for pushback and departure. Release. Ooh! Yes. I think it can do all that stuff for you, can't it? Yes, it does, but I do need to release the chocks. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. <laughs> So this is very posh. Yes, the RT in GSX, I mean, every airline's different, I know, but uh, it's very different than my operator. Uh, oh, the only thing I forgot to set was sort of an MFRA in case the engine fails, so we'll set that to 1,010 feet. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see the landing performance in Santa Marta today. Departure checks completed. Bypass pin inserted. Why hasn't the door closed and why hasn't GSX closed the air bridge? Oh, I think it's just sequence the doors again. There we are. Uh-oh, I've got the wrong type of tug. It's going to do its weird tow bar thing. Oh no, hold on. I'm going to wait for this guy to taxi first. So I will only release the parking brake because I don't want to block this guy as soon as he starts taxiing. We'll go there, otherwise we're going to block him. Yeah, listen back, he did say Rosso too. Thanks, Liam. I just didn't read that back and he should have that. Thanks for that. But yeah, Rosto 2 then, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll use LNAV then. 
I have to take off maintain runway heading. And uh, until 0.5 miles and then departure runway 1.8 miles and then oh, left turn. Taxi. Request taxi. Like six taxi via alpha nose right, so we want nose right, tail left. So we'll just wait until he has started taxiing before we start our pushback. Tax off. Release parking brakes, please. Yes, patience, sir. Uh, this whole sequence is uh, a bit of a pain. Right, excellent. He's taxiing. Release parking brakes, please. Alpaca looking good, absolutely. I hope the American guy doesn't mind me just pushing in. <laughs> Release parking yes, brakes, yes, yes. Parking brakes. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. Start at will. <laughs> Excellent. We timed that well. That's the. Is that the seven? No, it's the eight hundred without winglets. Looks cool. Right, starting engine number two. Tell off the tugger. I beg your pardon, DFW. Uh, <laughs> At least you're saying please, that is true, Ted. Radar, Alpaca, uh, nice looking airport here, says Palo. Yeah, this Alpha, is one of IFR, the SimWorld update Alpha. airports, so really good. Alpaca 3212, Kingston Radar, clear to the Sierra Killer. Airport, Airport, Radar Vectors, Lebuc. Fly Plan Rod, climb and maintain 5000 Rosto, two departures. Yeah, you got the same Rosto, too. Well, well listened, ladies and gentlemen. Where to uh, Santa Part of the uh, Red Vector Resolve, Austin, uh, then as filed, Climb uh, 5000, the uh, Rosta 2 departure and 673. Okay, 3212, Red Vector, 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 Massively high EGT in the NG. That's higher than even the max. That's 100 degrees hotter than the NG. But two six should be 400. Six two four six three two stable. Uh, starting engine number one. Yeah, the PMDGs had this really high EGT during engine start for quite a while now. Back in the days, it wasn't that old. How old do you think I am to Mango? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've only ever flown the NG in the Waiting your confirmation for a good engine start. N2, all pressure, N1. 25. Actually, no, American Air Force 2, taxi, only point. I'm sorry, taxi by Alpha. Holding the port runway 07, give way to the 737 Eddie. N2, all pressure, N1, fuel's in, everything's looking good. Oh, pack a 62 Echo Delta, ready for departure. Cockpit to ground. Cockpit. We have a good engine start. Yeah, you can disconnect. Unlocking gear. It has become old. Yeah, the, running this channel has aged me. Echo Delta, one zero four zero seven, Austin zero seven. There we are. Start to cut out. Monitoring engine one, two, six, three, six, one and two is stable. Very hot EGT noted. Right, we'll do the before taxi flow. We'll see. Finishes his pushback procedure. We usually wait. Just in the sim to keep you on the road. What's she waiting for? Now oh, he's got to go get the pin, I think. Fire controls. Full forward. Full back. Left, center, right, Tow center. Full Five right and full left. Recall. Left is clear. Right Blank is the clear. Load to you. And then we'd read the before taxi checklist. Flight fair says here Sobo is working on new turbofan engine parameters. Hopefully PMDG can use them to improve the engine uh, model. Yeah, that would be good. Because that's one thing Explain 12 updated was more fine tuning for devs, for example, M1 and N2 curves, whereas in, P in the P in the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator it's very basic. It has to be quite linear, I think. Or they can only do one, which is why the engines spool up way too fast in the PMDG 737 from idle. Because ground idle, they take ages to spool. Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, request taxi. Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, taxi by Alpha holding for runway 07. Taxi holding point Alpha, runway 07, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. Oh, we're doing good for time, look. Right, clear left, clear right, said Jim. Let's do the config check. 
Yeah, that is ridiculous. Yeah, this ball of time. I mention it every time, but that should take from 20% to even 40% should take about 10 seconds in the real aircraft. Here it takes one. Have you seen the X-Plane 12.1 teasers? I have, Cadet. I don't know when it will be launched. Well, we'll do the before takeoff checklist. So, config we've checked. Flaps 5, 5 green lights. Stab trim 5.6 units. I didn't set the stab trim, which is why we have checks. Sets. Takeoff briefing. We've got. It's not the correct hole point there, is it? No, it's there. It's all the way to the end. So, packs are auto, bleeds are on, the V speeds are set. 39, 40, 45 on the MCP. Departures the uh, Libex. No, it's not. It's not the Libex 2. It's the. Um, I forgot what it was called now. Rosto something, wasn't it? Rosto 2 departure, which is in the FMC. And that's it. Has us climb straight ahead 0.5 miles and uh, right turn to Rosto. Stop altitude is 5,000 feet set on the MCP. We'll call it NADP2, so we'll accelerate to 1,000 feet and accelerate. And uh, any problems with climb straight ahead 3,000 feet? Six to Echo Delta, Reviewed. radar contact, turn right heading 100, climb and maintain Cabin is secure. Check's complete. Right 100, climb and maintain 14,000, Alpaca 6 to Echo Delta. Alpaca 2, Sierra Mike, ready for departure. Alpaca 2, Sierra Mike, wind 0407, last runway 07, clear for takeoff. Right, 07, clear takeoff, Alpaca 2, Sierra Mike. Good, we can use LNAV because we're on the uh, Rotso Sid. Cleared for takeoff already. Bear wings 1473, contact Havana 124, that's my 552. So MCP on, set, two, transponder, four, five, five, TARA, five, strobe five, lights are on, landing lights on, checklist complete. This has been the quickest ever start of stream to take off, even with Vatsit. 35 minutes we're lining up and taking off, guys. Fantastic. <coughs> Tigers in chat, we'll do a rolling departure. Bye bye, Jamaica. And heading to Colombia. It's just the sea. That's all we have for the next hour and 20 minutes until we hit South America. And yeah, Kingston Radar, American A42, Timing. ready for departure. A42, runway 0711 f Perfect. Cabin ready. Because the engines take, you know, you spool up instantly. I'm just going to wait until I'm completely lined up before Last I start them up. I would have put them up by now. Oh god, come on, Rudder. <laughs> there we are. Now, why are they going? They're going quite slow now. Six to Echo Delta, fly direct on the box. There we are. Come on, number two. Stabilised. Set takeoff. Oh, it's up to my auto throttle. Set takeoff for us. Right. I know what that is. It's the doors. It's the stupid PMDG Master Caution doors. There we are. Takeoff thrust set indications normal. What I should have done is stopped with a Master Caution. Checked. No dead band. Gears up. Oh, it's doing. <laughs> Is it up there? Our gear up. L nav. There we are. Thousand feet. Bug up. Sorry, a slight left turn before right, wasn't it? There's N1 at 1500 feet, climb thrust. Flaps 1. Alpaca 3212, ready for taxi. Alpaca 3212, taxi by Alpha, only 4.07. Yeah, the gear thing's a bit broken in the... You have to sort of flick it like I've done and put it back down for it to go up. It's just a workaround that one of the members, Steve M, gave me. Good. So, flaps up, no lights, 3,000 feet AGL. So, vertical speed, we'll set to 2,000. Echo Delta, climb and maintain, flight level 310. Climb and maintain, flight level 310. 220 knots. Echo Delta. Abaka 2, Sierra Mike, radar contact, turn right heading 100, climb and maintain 14,000. Riding 100 degrees, climb maintain 14,000, I'll pack a 2 Sierra Mike. So 100 degrees. Mike in A42, wind 04, 07, 07, clear for takeoff. 
Clear for takeoff, zero seven American Air Force. It's hard. You. Hand flying, one four thousand. That is set. We can go VNAV. There we are, two fifty knots. Let's get it in trim on the heading, and then we'll re-engage the automation. Looking fantastic in the sim. Right, that's all in trim, pretty much. And we don't say standard in the Direct Direct Lobox, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. Right, so let's get the automation in now to our workload. Command A, only ever check your FMA to verify the autopilot's engaged. Two one two six King Sierra Radar, just gonna maintain one five thousand Q and H one zero one six. Oh, what was that direct again? Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, sorry, can you just confirm that direct again? Lima India Bravo Echo X ray. Uh, Director Lima India Bravo Austria X ray, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike's. Oh, Live X. That's what we had originally. That is on our flight plan. Ah! Live X. Lima India Bravo Echo X ray. Uh, ah! Jim, I thought you were familiar with flying in this airspace. <laughs> Execute. L nav available. We don't need NTI, it's 24 degrees. I'm back at 3212, ready for departure, runway 07. So a bit of a discontinuity, but we'll just route direct to Ronlo afterwards. Point of two, wait, runway 07, I'm back at 3212. Right, I have to take off checklist. Kings and radar, American off. Start switches off. Oh, the sim looks beautiful. Air conditioning, air pressure is out. 3.2, climbing, set. Peace the crew. American 842, radar cancer, maintain yeah. 14,000. Altimeter is 1016, passing 8,000, altitude 14,000. Okay, 3212, wind 040, 7,000. Second check is complete. Wind 070, clear for takeoff. I was due to land at 45, we're going to be 20 minutes early. Think about the sim is looking fantastic, isn't it? That's great. MDS one says land out. Yes, zero sea level at Santa Marta. So yeah, the master caution, guys. So yes, I must reassure you. On the line, we'd immediately stop below 80 knots for master caution. But I know exactly what it is in the PMDG. It's the I maintain flight level 370. I'm back at 200. So 370. Set, set standard, passing 103 for flight level 370, and that's set. Overhead panel, MCP and FMC, we have pre-cruise checks now as well, so fuel four pumps, lights, uh, logo is off, APU is off, pressurization 4.2, set, nice and smooth, release of passengers, recall, uh, monitoring 1 to 1 5, we then log on to CPDLC. Yeah, the gear was disconcerting. I saw that comment there. I think, uh, three, two, one, two, uh, Taylor, what does the MEL say about autopilot? You can dispatch from autopilot. Obviously, one of the considerations would be your flights. If you're doing a four-hour, five-hour sector, zero, zero, you're not yeah, going to dispatch on yeah, your autopilot. But on a hour flight, two, two. in non-busy airspace, you can. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, that's correct. 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 Yeah, I'll check. I'll double check the MEL, but yeah, there's no no autopilots required for dispatch. Just take into account the flight length. But obviously, the captain has discretion. You know, he could say no. I want an autopilot, please. But I'll have a look. Exactly what it says, if you like. So autopilot MEL. Auto flight, auto flight systems. So two installed. Oh, here we are. One system required. So, so you can dispatch with no autopilots, provided that your minimums don't require its use. So basically, an auto land, so Captain Cat Three can't do. Uh, en route operations do not require autopilots, and the number of flight segments and segment duration is acceptable to the flight crew. So, so you know, the captain and the first officer need to decide what to do. Now, another thing is RVSM airspace requires autopilot without hold, so you can't go above 29,000 feet as well. Note states every effort must be made to repair the autopilot as soon as possible. Uh, it needs to be fixed within three days. 
It's uh, like MELB, so it's three days it has to be fixed if it Drink is uh, inoperative. But don't forget, you've got, you've got two. I have dispatched with one ill spot inoperative, but there's lots of forts, uh, a lot of fort needed. So one order pilot needed for outhold for RVSM airspace, Cat 2, Cat 3 unavailable, uh, MMPS operations as well, or, or Atlantic Ops, North Atlantic Ops require it. Uh, so yeah, you can dispatch, wouldn't want to, on a very long day, but if I was doing a short 45 minute flight, yeah, no problem. Uh, 2126, general heading 220. Trust set simulations, yeah, exactly, can't fly RVSM without autopilot. Cadet Vinna 2 says, hold till the flight attendants hold the aircraft. Falcon 321, Sukhwan, maintain follow for 370. 370, I'll Nice routing today then. Two. So now on our flight plan from Libex to Ronlu, uh, just over the whole of uh, Jamaica, and then over the Caribbean, all the way to Colombia, and our second sector is just going to take us to the capital there. It'll be a night flight with a lot of terrain around and a, tr a tricky RMP approach. No, no uh, ILSs today. And seven one four Kings Road, I clear to the CA Kilo Sierra Mike Airport via radar back to Slibuck. Flight plan route. Yeah, would you be pretty crazy to have a live stream about autopilot? Have I done that? Have I done a, dis a flight with no autopilot? 770. Dispatch flight. Or no effort. Oh, I can't remember. I could do that one day. That the workload obviously is very high then, especially if you're on VATSIM. James says, first time I've caught you live. Hello, hello to you. Thanks for popping in. Uh, John Boy, how often would you use climb at maximum rate? Uh, so, the thing to remember about max rate, max angle here is it's usually based off ATC requests. And we're not going to select it for operational reasons, really, for performance. It's ATC request. So, max rate is going to give you the shortest time to get to 37,000 feet. So, if ATC ever said expedite climb to XYZ, Use max rate. It's the quickest you'll ever get there. Next question then, chat. Yeah, max angle. When would we select max angle? If max rate is the shortest time to get to whatever flight level ATC wants to get you to, to. Uh, what about max angle? Is not current. Well, if uh, anyone here knows. Thanks, sir. The wind is zero four zero six knots. Q and H one. Welcome on board, Alexander Per Pernini or Per Pernin. Welcome on board. You've got an NV Joti. Yep, technically obstacle clearance, but not really at that stage. Uh, but yeah, distance, shortest distance. So if AT said uh, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike uh, be level at whatever by Ronlu, that would be good time to use max angle. If they said expedite climb, use max rate. Clear a mountain. I'd be doing something else, Steve, if I was trying to clear a mountain. Not going heads down in the other scene, selecting max angle. I'd be firewalling the thrust lever. <laughs> Wings level 20 degrees. I'd just pray. If Dre remains a threat, stick shake above it. Yeah, so you'll see max max rate is at uh, a slightly lower speed than 296, which is our optimal. Max angle is even slower. So if I go max rate, that's 260 knots. Max angle, 240 knots. And it's based off several bits of parameters. It's not always 260 and 240. It'll be based off your weight. It'll probably take your head and tailwind component into account. It just it's a FMC derived speed. Pull nine G's. Day to speak some Spanish in Colombian airspace. Tommy, thank you firstly for spotting my slight uh, uh, spelling mistake for Colombia. I think I do that every time I fly in Colombian airspace. Do excuse my lack of history knowledge. Why can't I speak Spanish in Colombian airspace? What it? I speak Spanish in Colombia, don't they? Hey Siri, what is the official language of Colombia? It is Spanish. Are you just staring at me to see it? I don't want to upset anyone. Ash, thank you very much. Streams are the best. What would be your dream aircraft to fly? Ooh, everyone else said every now and then. Um, if I was to fly any aeroplane, don't laugh. If I was genuinely to have a go, I'd like to now have a go on an Airbus A320. Uh, Flown it in the sim a few times. I would genuinely love to have a go on one now in real life. Let's see what the fuss is about. <clears throat> Softstar says you just activated my Siri. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Other 
uh, AI voice enabled questions apps are available. Now I'd like to have a go on the 320 just to see what it's all about. If if I someone said to me, "What do you want to fly today?" I'd say that. Uh, Seven four as well. Any big Boeing jets, I'd like to have a go on. So yeah, that's how the 737 entry. Yes, he flies the 330 now, doesn't he? Big big Airbus. Uh, yeah, I mean, everyone's switched around. How many 320 sim pilots now on the 78? I'm the only one that's stuck to my guns, like the stability and that. Everyone's switched operator, haven't they? Or V1 is still with Airbus, isn't he? Yeah, we should have a go at a full size sim. That would be cool. Uh, Victor says F22. I wouldn't have a clue what I'm doing. Uh, John Boy says, How about a helicopter? I've had two lessons in an R22. I enjoyed it, but I found it's challenging. Order Havana, thank you for service, have a great evening. There we are, bye bye Jamaica. Approaching Ron Lee. Uh, like and Kingston is just off there on the right hand side. We need a flight once between Montego Bay and Kingston. For those of you interested, ETA is 2226, just over an hour's time from now. Cadet, uh, do you ever find flying airliners in real life a bit boring? Yeah, if I'm on a long two-sector day and you're sat there watching the automation do its job, it can be, uh, of course, a little less enjoyable, the flying, but what makes me enjoy my flying now is the fact I work in the sim. Uh, I've only flown this year once, so I've done one flight this year and we're nearly into March. I should be flying a bit more. Uh, but we're so busy in the sim, lots of uh, pilots joining from different airlines. I, I love it, I'm really enjoying it, uh, being back in the, in the training centre. I, I really enjoy teaching and learning, as you probably see from my streams. Not only from a sharing knowledge perspective, but it's improving my knowledge as well. And also streaming does too, because you guys sometimes ask fantastic questions. It really makes me actually need to think about it and if I'm not sure I'll look it up in a book and hey presto I've increased my knowledge or refreshed my knowledge on a certain procedure and you know, we were talking about dispatch earlier it's good to refresh that when else would I have had that question asked and it certainly helps me in the simulator uh, when I'm briefing or, or or running the session or debriefing uh, using this this sim and, and you guys asking these questions they're great uh, Milan, uh, why are you not using the HUDs the PMDG has it's fully operational 2000 does 2000 your operator have it in the max pretty much that's the reason Milan we don't have Negative. the heads up display fitted to our NGs or maxes so I usually have the NGs either the PMDG or the Zebra 1 fitted or uh, you know, set up as per my operators. Uh, the heads-up display is a fantastic tool. I've spoken to people who have used it in other airlines, but uh, I might try it one day, and I tried it in the 7-8 uh, in the sim, and I can see its benefits, but I like the PFD and ND <laughs> only. But that's just, just preference, personal preference. Substar says there is a 7-8 now out, or like a proper 787. Is it the Kuro mod? Is a good one. Oh no, it just changes the ten into an eight, doesn't it? Seven eight seven eight. It's good. There's no payware quality one there, but uh, the default one had a lot of upgrades a few months back, which is pretty good. Tommy, from my uh, from my understanding, once in Spain, you asked for a beer in Spanish as a dip, so why not give it a try to at least greet in Spanish? Uh, yeah, uh, uno cerveza, por favor. <laughs> I'm not going to ask that to the controller. I'll, I'll say good evening in Spanish. Hayden, good question. Do you ever have overconfident students who need reining in? Rarely. Rarely. Uh, occasionally you do, but very rare. I've Maybe twice. Certainly not since I've been back as a TRI. Uh, but as an SFI, I've had a couple of, a couple of guys just say, you know, some people expect a tight rating to be handed to them by the end of the course, but I've trained hundreds if not thousands of pilots now yeah, two, one, two, six, uh, at my operator a couple of times maybe, and even like then it wasn't, it was just like, a, you've got to put a bit more work in guys, not and really a, an attitude yeah, issue. Yeah, 
Juan, hello. It says, hi, Captain. Greetings from Branquila. Hey, Branquila, that's what I was trying to say, Juan. That's our alternate. That's the nearest Santa Marta city. Good flight. Thank you very much. Yeah, Santa Marta. So I'll show you what that's some event we're doing Havana Airport as well to maintain 5,000, squawk 6732. Check. Page. Good Havana Airport as well, 5,000, squawk 6732. Yeah, so this is the Vatsum event we're doing today. Started an hour ago. So, Santa Marta, dangerous approach. Demonstrate your skills flying to one of the most important paradoxes. The Pearl of the Caribbean. Um, so, there's a suggested route from. Um, Bogota, yeah, but we're, we're doing uh, the opposite zero direction, zero direction zero later. Hopefully, we, we, well, we'll miss this. We'll be landing after 2300, or maybe we'll have some ATC later. But yeah, the reason it's dangerous is its location. It's a beautiful oh, approach. And I've actually got some freeware okay. scenery from the uh, flightsim.io site, and it looks really good. I've checked it all out. Check bugs with GSX as well. Uh, uh, and it's very short runway. It's very narrow as well, but you can land a 737 there, no problem. So it's only 40 meters wide as opposed to 45, and we'll check the landing performance when we do our briefing later. But it is tight. It is tight. Hermes, uh, appreciate you being curious, but I won't ask any que questions about my uh, employment status, where I'm based, where where I operate. But thank you. Uh, you know, I understand the question, but uh, I don't uh, disclose that. Uh, Andrea, any uh, our level D hours considered yeah, as so time on the real plane? So they log separately. Stuff. Log separately, Andrea. I do log my hours as an instructor. I don't log my hours as a student or instructor when it's my own session. But uh, as an instructor, I log my hours separately. But it doesn't count towards total hours in the aircraft. But I I have logged them. Uh, let's have a look here. There, I'll share it. I'll share it on my screen. I hope no one calls me personally. Yeah, that's my flight experience. Is that coming up clearly? I don't think it is. But yeah, there you go. Total hour sim, total hour time. So total hour in the sim, 1,323 hours over 313 sessions. So that's 313 sessions I've instructed, 6,295 hours in the aircraft. So total 7,618 hours. He's based in Alpaca. <laughs> Based in Osaka. Yep, good. FMS, okay, thank you. No, you you appreciate your uh, understanding, thank you. Dave, what up is that? It's MCC Pilot Log. I'm very fortunate not to have the subscription because I purchased the original MCC Pilot Log when it was a one off purchase oh, 15 years ago, and then it became a subscription based logbook. And because I own the original one, they allowed people to do a one off upgrade for another. 80 quid or whatever it was uh, uh, for a lifetime license you. so I don't have to pay a subscription otherwise yeah if you download it and start using it you have to pay a subscription 50. 40. 40. Uh, Kenemke, thank you very much for your donation very kind sir your motorbike got smashed on our last sector <laughs> we flight simmers not only have great sims available these days we also are so fortunate to have you in oh, our community very kind. so much appreciated captain you're most welcome Kenemke. thank you very much for your donation and uh Oh, you're getting reactions like you've got two thumbs up there. So, so thank you very much. Appreciate it. My pleasure, guys. I really enjoy sitting down here Sunday evening. My fiance has gone to bed. She's got work tomorrow. And I was like, well, what else am I going to do this evening? I, I'm getting uh, my body used to late or early, spending on my shift. And I'm coming on to late. So uh, I thought I'd stay up and spend the evening with you guys. Thank you very much. John Boy says, we'd love you to do another stream with lots of failures. Really enjoy your last one. Oh, thank you very much. On the next sector, I'm not going to do the one every five minutes failure, because I'm going to really change your destination. I'll turn it on and maybe I'll put on one every hour. <laughs> we'll see if I remember. Longcat, you did exactly the same. Feel smug as hell about that one. Yeah, I'd be too with the logbook because everyone asks. I'm like, yep, yeah, don't pay <laughs> subscription. Um, do you use the Crew Lounge app as well? I don't. I only use the logbook. I've got access to the other bits and pieces, but no, just the logbook's fine. Look at that Contrail. Microsoft Flight Sims, that's a really realistic looking Contrail. Maybe a little bit 
It needs a little less opacity, but um, that looks fantastic, really. Really good stretching out there. Fantastic. One failure every 30 minutes would be fair, says Dave. Well, it depends what the failure is. <laughs> <laughs> Polish mate, hope you're doing well. Uh, if you've been a member for the channel for a very long time, how how have I only just seen you pop up here over two years? Uh, do you have to run OPT calculations every time the weather changes? If so, what if QNH changes on final? Great question, Polish mate. So yes, uh, if you're on final, you do your your landing calculation performance during your setup. So usually around 20 minutes before landing, and it is unusual that there'll be a significant weather change. Now one hectopascal is not going to make any difference on your landing calculation. You know, let, it, it, it'll be a bit a meter or two. So it's not worthwhile cancelling the approach going around for that. Now, if there's rain forecast, you always plan conservatively. So you'll use wet figures. Um, if you get the wind and it's gusting, you always take the wind factor without the gust. If it's a headwind or if you've got a tailwind, you, you would use the gust. So you always take the most conservative figures when calculating the landing performance and uh, and assume that they they are the conditions that you'll get. Now, if it's very tight, you could probably, on performance, you could probably get an update to see if it improves things, but usually what you calculate is fine. But the, the, the 737, like most commercial jet airliners, has fantastic stopping performance. On a dry runway, you can stop Max manual braking with a lot of heavy aircraft and around, you know, a thousand meters. In fact, it, 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 it'll, it'll stop quickly if you need it to. When it's a contaminated runway, you need to be very conservative with your planning, especially if the, the runway uh, reported braking action drops it's below sort of three. three. You need to be very, very careful. Um, braking actions of zero or one, where we cannot land or take off in two, is slippy. Uh, I've landed on a braking action of three before uh, in an undisclosed Eastern European country and uh, it was the first time I've landed on contaminated runway and I was a, a quite a, an inexperienced skipper, it was quite new and I had all the brake th three, uh, flat 40 and it said we'd lose 2,000 metres and we had about 2,500 metres and the initial stopping performance was really good, reverses and speed brake are very effective at high speed but once we sort of got, got below 80 knots you could feel the anti-skid kicking in on the wheel brakes and it was juddering, it's all like uh, uh, kicking in and, and we were like no, I'm keeping the reverses out until we get to 10 knots because you look at instances of runway excursions and one of the most common causes of runway excursions our, our crew stone the speed brakes too early. They stone the speed brakes and then they, they go, oh crap, we're running out of runway and the brakes aren't stopping. And then you have to recycle the, the speed brake, uh, the reverses, and they take about from from stow, from from extended to stowed and re retracting again. It takes about 20 seconds. So you keep them out until stopping is assured. If you can go to idle, but keep them at idle until you're at uh, low speed uh, and stopping is assured. Really important. Yeah, runway excursion is the most common instant accident in aviation today. Um, you know, going off the side or the end of a runway is classed as an accident, uh, so it's the most common cause. It, it, I'm sure you use the name. It, 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 dot, dot, dot. Have you tried using Log 10 Pro? Now I've heard of it, but not used it. Anyway, there we are, over the Caribbean now. Just southbound until we get to Columbia. Yeah, sim looks fantastic. Lifetime live weather. Sorry, we don't have the overlay. It just doesn't work properly for me in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Chemtrails. Yes, if you're interested, you've just tuned in. We're flying to Colombia right now, inbound to Santa Marta, landing at 26. You can tell I've taken. Standard fuel at landing fuel uh, 2.6 tons to divert to Barraquino or Barraquilina. To, uh, we need 2.0. So we're landing like an hour and 20 minutes endurance. It's up for me. I'll back uh, to your mic, maintain Mach point seven seven for entry or spacing. Uh, seven, Mach decimal seven seven, I'll pack a two zero mic. So, cruise decimal seven seven. Executes. There we are. Slightly lower speed. John Boy says, talking of challenging approaches, uh, have 
to try the art of approaching to Queenstown. Have we done that on a stream as well? Don't know. I don't know. I think we might have done. There's some awesome approaches in New Zealand, that's for sure. Oh, Victor, there was a E195 that had a runway excursion in Belgrade these days, yeah. I mean, a runway excursion is usually, uh, you know, they've actually crashed off the runway. They've, they've managed to take off uh, at the wrong intersection. Incredibly, how that aircraft didn't break up in mid-air. <sighs> Very lucky, but yeah, really serious incident, that one. And how the aircraft flew, I mean, credit to... It's in Brera, isn't it, that makes E195? Uh, it's... Uh, it's uh, really, really strong a testament to the, the designers of that aircraft, but yeah, what a serious incident that would have been. Uh, T says, have you experienced severe icing and its effects? No, I've had moderate icing for sure. I wouldn't have what I'd uh, say is severe icing. Severe icing is, you know, you need to deviate out of the, the severe icing immediately. But moderate icing I've had sort of ice forming, you know, on the heated windows. Um, you can see that this view is actually pretty good. That's what you can see from the flight deck. So when you we have ice forming on the bolt here, this is the best in the in the in the A320. You've got a little pole sticking out here. Our ice detection is the wiper bolt. So this is the best clue you have to ice. Even at night, you can just shine your, your torch on that. Uh, this is on a see this here. You just literally grab this out, pull that out here, extend that out, turn on the lamp. Actually works here. It's really nice that they modeled that in PMDG. Pull that out of there, and you can just shine it up there, check for icing, and then you turn your, your wing lights on, and you can look at your leading edge. Now there's eight leading edge slats. The most outer uh, leading edge slat is not heated. So what happens is when you turn it on, you'll see that this ice stays on here and on the winglet, but here on the inboard ones, the ice disappears from the wing anti-ice. So that's the best way of, of detecting detecting need for ice. But never had severe icing. Dave, good point. How about three nine zero for no speed? I think it's for sequencing. It won't make any difference. So that aircraft ahead is also going into Santa Marta. Uh, listen, to me, great question. Why is the outermost slat not heated? The reason is, and I remember asking an engineer this. So you have eight. Look. So there's the first one. One, two, three, four. And then in, inboard is a crew flat. These slats here. That one is not heated because it's such a thin leading edge. Here is a lot fatter. So it's actually going to affect the lift. This one is so thin that the cost and the added weight of having... Uh, can you guys hear me? Hold on. I don't know if it's too loud. I'll just turn this in now. Okay. The cost of having the added weight uh, from having heating elements here, it, it doesn't justify the extra expense of the aircraft. And they found in testing that the performance with ice forming on this part of the wing, uh, was the performance impact was negligible. So so it's not heated on uh, slat number one and slat number eight. That's what an engineer told me a long time ago. So I had the same question. On the 320, only the outboard three are heated. That I did not know. Hi Elgin, evening Captain, flew home on a Max 8 today, notice engine start was longer than the NG, can I ask why? Thank you, fantastic question uh, Elgin Thomas. So the Leap 1Bs uh, are much larger than the NGs and the reason they take so long is something called BRM, Bode Rotor Motoring, that's what it is. Uh, so basically when the engine's off, the shaft, the input shaft in between the M1 and M2, it bends slightly. Now that sounds really alarming. Uh, but um, in testing what they found was, I don't know if it's made out of a different material, carbon fibre, I'm not an engineer, but what happens is when you start the engine it needs to sit at about 20% N2 motor to get the shaft straightened out before you start fueling, uh, inserting fuel. So so that's what that is and um, if the engine is cold it doesn't need it but if you start it after a quick turnaround, after 30 minutes to an hour, uh, it does take a really uh, long time for it to start, up to three minutes. Uh, but yeah, it's about double uh, the length of the the NG. But that's unique to the leap, uh, the leap engines. But yeah, BRM Bode Bode Rotor Motoring, it's called. I think it's the same on the uh, the Airbus Neo that has the leap engines. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but um, yeah, I remember I remember reading about that.
road boat motoring. <laughs> sounds, sounds relaxing. Brilliant. Trying to find a better definition for you. <clears throat> Welcome. Uh, the manual doesn't go into a huge amount of detail. Just simply says that uh, BRM is designed to straighten the rotor shaft, which naturally bows due to thermal buildup after the engine is shut down. And its timing is variable based off a number of factors. Uh, BRM, you'll get motoring on the uh, engine display and at 25% insert the fuel. That's it. Thanks for subscribing, whoever that was. Uh, Inez Akin, hope you're doing well. Uh, Cadet Vinda 2 says, do you think full ICAS with the crew alerting system would should be introduced I'll on the max? Um, I don't think it's a necessity. Uh, isn't that what's causing uh, such a delay uh, for max 10 uh, certification? Because it needs four. ICAS or something, or ECAM, I don't know. Um, this is my operator has uh, operated 737 four, safely, as have many other Bye. operators safely with just the QRH. And the QRH does its function incredibly well. We're trained how to use it, uh, how to read it properly. It, as long as you've got the QRH. Kingston Control, you're coming out of 6,000 of you. Descending I think, to flight level no. 210 out of 3,400. I don't think any aircraft okay, moving forward will, will have it, apart from maybe the Max 10. Uh, fantastic. You're welcome, Elgin. Yeah, my, excuse my description as I said it, I'm not an engineer, but um, essentially what it is. Dual cooling, leap jets don't have it, talking about the engine. Elgin, it was in Porto this morning in driving rain. I just thought it was because it was wet. Ah, no. No, nothing to do with the outside temperature. It's all to do with Back at 2, see a mic contact by Inquilla Center on 128.4. At 128.4. Back at 2, see a mic. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, number 6. Oh, was that someone else's call sign I took? I just heard out back. That's a big threat in aviation as well. Taking the wrong call sign. So it was aircraft ahead. Now how do I pronounce this? It's Bar Barranquilla. Barranquilla? Yeah, CNAD's the FIR boundary. Actually, there's a couple of things I should be doing here when we reach top of climb. Max continuous thrust, FIR boundary, CNAD. Am I going to regret taking flight plan fuel? Is it really busy at this destination? Because we need to backtrack on this runway as well. Thanks. I've got Thank about 15 minutes of holding fuel no, contingency. You probably haven't heard of Alpaca here. Maintain flight level 310. And repeat the first half of the message, Alpaca 6 to Echo Delta. Uh, continuing our fall, uh, expecting runway 01. Ah. Landing runway 01, Alpaca 6 Rekadol. Barranquilla, Brothers Tudis, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, flight level 370, approaching Synod, Mac Decimal 77. Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, Barranquilla, Buenas Tardes, Dry Kenta, flight level 370, continuing our fall. Thank you, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. I appreciate it, my, my Spanish. Iceman, will you do a 737 giveaway soon? Uh, not today. If you'd like to uh, do one for me on behalf, <laughs> if you might guess. Probably it's BMDG. Don't do vouchers as well. Not, uh, mine says not regret. Just be tested for how assertive you are when it comes to your need to land. We'll have to see. Uh, Spitfire says it's similar to the depot That's function right. you see on the Concorde engines panel. I wonder if it's a similar function. No idea. No idea. Yeah, we'll have to see. <laughs> well, so we talked about this on a lot of streams before. Our alter so our reserves um, 
It's two tons. Okay, and that's to divert to Barra Bar Brown Keeler, who we're talking to at Major International Airport, and land with our final reserves. So we can go down to two turns now. At the moment, we're landing with 2.6. So that gives us about 15 minutes of holding. So one missed approach, and then decide do we divert or continue for a second. Now, you can commit to your destination if landing is assured. Um, that decision is based on several factors. For example, if the weather's a bit pants and there's only one runway available, uh, you know, I'd be more inclined to divert somewhere else. Maybe if it has two air runways. But if the if your destination has two runways, for example, let's say if it gets blocked, you can still land. You'd be more inclined to commit to your destination. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. Now, this is not the sort of airport you'd like to commit to uh, because it's a 1600 meter by 40 meter runway busy event today. But the weather is good, so we'll see. Let's see what happens. I'm a little bit more inclined to get to our destination when streaming. It's more fun, and you guys like it when I have uh, difficult situations. Now, I'm going to have a little look on VATSIM anyway, just to see how busy it is. Um, I mean, certainly the aircraft ahead of us is going well, to the destination. There's an aircraft behind. And I'm just going at the airport as well. There's only tower. There's 17 arrivals. Okay. That doesn't sound like much on VATSIM. This airport does not have the capacity for multiple approaches. Look, there's only one taxiway, Bravo Alpha, landing on 01. So we've got a 180 backtrack and it's got a tiny, tiny apron. Um, I don't think it even appears on there. No, it doesn't. I'm going to have to zoom in on the VATSIM map. Uh, so there's our alternate, Barranquilla, and it has five stands, no it doesn't even appear upon that, but it's got, not, it's got five stands here. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see how we get on. We will have to increase spacing on that traffic ahead of us though, to, to get in, plus any other tra traffic from Bogota. Don't you, no, no floating today, this will be a flat 40 landing, well I'll tell you what, we're, I know we're still a long way away, but let's actually have a quick look at en route landing. So 01, we'll definitely need flat 40, I think this takes your actual landing weight, 61 tons, 1700 metres, hmm, what's the actual distance? Okay, let's have a display threshold, so that's okay. Port weather calculate. There you go. Look, order break three has a stopping at 1575 meters tight. And the thing is, this is unfactored. At my operator, this would be factored by 1.15%. So 1575 times 1.15. So my operator would be 1811. So that would be 100 meters over the distance. So we'd have to go. On, I'm going on a break, Max. There you go. 1100 meters. Perfect. And max manual is even more. Correcto. Right. 922 meters, not bad for a. Uh, we've got 180 passengers on board. That's the stopping for unfactored on a dry runway. Pretty good. Eh? An empty 737, you could stop it 600 meters. You, you could do it. No problem. But yeah, we're going to use max auto. And even with reverses, you'll notice there's no change in distance because it's a dry runway with max auto. What about parking brake on? Brilliant. 180 annoyed passengers. Dave says, Oh, but we know your butter this like nobody's business and would be disappointed by anything over 125 feet per minute. Uh, of course. Yes, you didn't see my last stream. <laughs> In my defence, the MD, MD 11 doesn't handle too well at the moment. Misery Cat says, Good evening, Captain. Can you please describe your instrument panel scan whilst in the cruise? And is PM doing something different than PF? Thanks. Great question. So, yeah, in the cruise, it is a low workload phase, so you're just sort of monitoring the automation. You don't really need to worry about attitude trust settings because it's being managed by the automation. So, yeah, just verifying everything's okay on route. It's an incredibly reliable system. I've never had an autopilot failure. I have had an auto throttle failure once. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it, there is. Is a low workload phase. Now, the pilot flying's primary objective is the flight path of the aircraft. 
that his number one role, which is the most important thing of all times. PM's role is primarily monitoring pilot flying to make sure, especially when hand flying, uh, he meets the landing gate criteria and the aircraft's fully stabilised. My airline has a zero blame policy on go around, so if you go around, you will never, ever be uh, questioned at all. You know, if you go around, that's it, you file a report, done. Uh, whatever the reason. In fact, if you go around for being destabilised at the approach, you'll be commended. So, so absolute zero plane policy on go arounds, uh, and uh, the radio as well is his primary role. Uh, so, so yeah, that sort of breaks the role into two. Yeah, order break. Yeah, the order break max in the PMDG is pretty aggressive, isn't it? More so than perhaps in real life. To be fair, the real aircraft order break max is pretty aggressive as well. You end up planning for it when needed, and then you touch down. And I, yeah, I won't, I won't uh, swear on my channel, but I usually go, oh, mm. <laughs> take out the border break straight away, straight to order break manual, you know, and kick out the order break because you, you're going through the windscreen. But I always forewarn the passengers. I'll say, look, the for operational reasons we're flying into a runway which is short it's well within the normal uh, operating lengths of the 737 but because of the the uh, the shortness of the runway we, we break very conservatively so it, it does feel quite aggressive but everything's completely under control so I usually do that when briefing into undisclosed uh, UK based in the middle <laughs> which is a very short runway if I ever do one, fly out of here maybe I don't sort of I've heard of rumours uh, Bianca, one, one, Bogota, Dave, the MD-11 was elevatorless, so it was a good job. Yeah, I remember on final, I was pitching up and down, nothing happened, so I was like, okay. Yeah, hopefully they'll, they'll fix that. But one of the members commented on Discord, was talking about how a lot of aircraft that have been ported from X-Plane 11 to X-Plane 12 from devs, the pitch authority hasn't quite been the same unless they've updated it. So the Phoenix 74 feels okay. The, uh, the Zebo mod feels fine. They've had a lot of changes, but I think the flight factor uh, they've updated it now. But before the, there was massive lag and delay in the input of the primary flight controls. They didn't send you out to fan the blades. Brakes brilliant. So man, is it okay for the brakes to squeak during landing? I've had it, you don't hear it from the flyback, but I've had passengers on cabin cruise who don't hear the brakes, but I think it sometimes happens. I've had them as a passenger once, I remember asking engineers and now it's nothing to concern. concern about. Anyway, look, 80 miles to go. Should probably start setting up for this approach. We always put 250 below 100, we'll fetch the winds. Only tower available there as well. We, I've just got the ATIS from... Uh, oh no, there is no ATIS that now our departure uh, arrival airport. Okay, <coughs> oh, maybe we had a range still. Execute. Oh, look at those winds. It's very hot there, I think, as well. So, Sierra Kilo, Sierra Mike is our destination. Center we're talking to at the moment. So, I've just got the METAR there. 34 degrees. I think we'll leave the APU. Now, on the first approach, we're not doing the replay just because I don't want to break anything in the aircraft and in the PMDG and GSX. So, we'll offload the passengers. I'll have a quick break and then we'll. We'll do a replay into Bogota. But yeah, it's 34 degrees, QNH is 1011. Very important when flying an RMP approach or non precision approach, you know, set the QNH. We are expecting runway 01. 10 miles, 4 miles. And the 38, 37,000 feet, so 3 times 37 is 111. That's roughly where top of descent will be. Perfect, bang on top of descent there. Uh, perfect, so that's all done. Fixings are in. Let's have a look at our arrival. So there is a SID, a uh, star, sorry, the Morgi 1 Delta. So that simply takes us direct from Morgi, which is where we're routing right to now. We've got to be at or above 10,000 feet. We'll be much higher than that. Uh, you can see here, we're going to be at 20,000 feet, 
Uh, Tukik is over 4,500. Anyone know what the IKO recommended speed is at the initial approach fix? Which I'm going to put into the FMC, something we do at my operator. See if anyone knows the answer. Hi Dimitri, long time no see. It's been a hot minute, Captain. Uh, greetings from Vancouver, Canada. Hope you're doing well, sir. Nice to put you in here. Pseudo Andy, you've got it. 220 knots is the recommended speed after the initial approach fix. So we'll put 220 knots or below at Gegis. I know it's only 222, but by doing that, we're flying the recommended speeds. So 220 knots or below, then it's on to the RNAV approach. So let's switch over to the RMP Zulu. So we're going to fly this via Gegis. We might have to if it's busy. Uh, but we've got RNAV, final approach course of 007. Again, there is no uh, pro. <laughs> the reason we set the course is it doesn't make any difference on a non precision approach if you're using LNAV and VNAV, it's just as a, a reminder. So we set the courses to the runway QDM. Uh, Lixum is the final approach fix. We must, must be at 1650. That checks in the FMC. And max 180 there and 160 at Lixum, that's coded. Minimums then, so it's LNAV minima. We are going to use VNAV as well, but when we fly LNAV minima, it's a MDA, which is uh, minimum descent altitude. We need to make an, a, an addition to this minima to ensure we don't go below this if we're not visual. So we always add 40 feet to this minima, so the minimums will be 550 feet don't need to do that on an ILS, you don't need to do that if you're using LNAV and VNAV minima, but we always add it to an MDA, so 550 feet is set both sides. RVR requirement is 2,400 metres, but it's 10k, few clouds, 34 degrees Celsius today, very, very hot. So, after Lixum, we need to descend on a 3 degree path. Whoops, this is always a bit of a PMDGism, this path should be identical. 3 degrees 2.95. The limit for an RNAV is 0 0.1, so it is acceptable. In the PMDG it never quite matches. I think it builds its own thing, but, it, but for all intents and purposes you won't notice. So we'll do some altitude distance cross checks after the FAF at 5 miles, so this is the correct height, 4 miles, 3 miles, 2 miles. Um, when we get to 1000 feet AGL we'll set the missed approach altitude, which is 4000 feet, and in the event of missed approach we always brief our actions on the first approach, so I'll push Togra, called go around flat 15, set go around thrust, pause the radar climb, gear up, 400 feet LNAV, and we'll climb straight ahead to Lixum, from Lick, uh, sorry, to uh, Perkra, slight left turn, 1420 or above, max 180, so we'll hold it flat, uh, we'll go flat 5, that's 182 knots, that's absolutely fine, left turn to Todvi, and then another left turn back to Gegis for another approach. Uh, look at that height rate. This approach, by the way, visually, it's spectacular. Thank you very much, Craig. He's advised you can expect <laughs> on have Yankee. <laughs> of course. Let's have a look here. That's authorization required. It's exactly the same. Now, we are going to have to fly an authorization required approach into Bogota because it's the only ones available. But I will request RMP Zulu. It's exactly the same. So if I happened to be flying into Santa Marta for whatever reason at my operator, we'd have to refuse this approach. We could do the VOR or we could do the RMP Zulu, but authorization required. Guess what's required? You need to have approval from your operator and the airport to fly this approach. So we'll request, we'll request the RMP Zulu. It's exactly the same track. Slightly lower minima, 450. Um, but that's it. It's, uh, it's the missed approach is, again, slightly different. Uh, we'll just go via Pukra. Uh Yeah, spectacular. Really nice approach. And we'll have this lovely high terrain off to the right hand side. Right, landing performance. Well, we've already checked it in the OPT five minutes ago. It's tight. 1700 metres. I'm going to tell you flat 40, water brake max. Stop very conservatively at 1124. And uh, brake cooling would be with reverse rust at this gross weight, maybe 25 30 minutes. So it should be fine for the next sector. So, we're arriving with 2.6, we need 2 tonnes to divert to Barrow Cleaner, uh, Barrow, Barrow Cleaner, uh, 600 kilos of fuel to burn, landing weight's going to be 61.1, that's saying 61.63, no problem, flat 40, what a break, and what's really cool on the 737, you'll notice when I rotate this, look, 1, 2, 3, notice on max how it pops out, there's a gate there in the real aircraft as well, so watch, it pops out and sticks out to get max set, which is just as per the real plane, which is pretty cool. 
And uh, yeah, taxi, I don't need to explain. Bravo or Alpha, stand. Briefing complete, descent checklist complete as well. At my operator, we perform an additional briefing when we fly non precision approaches or our non ILS approach, um, where we talk about how we're going to configure, what modes we're going to use, actions when we're visual, uh, if any cold temperature correct corrections are required. UBA, which might be to 34. Yeah, right then, level 310, uh, so, yeah, that's all done. Max on a break is vicious. It's aggressive. It's it's used every day by operators. You know, for example, aircraft landing, uh, short runways like Leeds Bradford in the UK or um, Santos Dumont in Brazil. They'll be using that routinely. Ah, Dave. Yeah, what are you on about? Andrea as well. What? How do you? What? Land Colombia one one nine zero four Barranquilla today. Right, Tell you what, does your airline allow radius to fix on SID? We've got some approaches we have approval for. It is the future. Bainey or Wing, uh, very antisocial watching the stream in our house. The house bar after work. Oh, Bainey, where's your invite? Let's all go to Bainey's house for a drink. <laughs> very cool. Steve, yep, Max on the break is great for a short runway. Absolutely. Barranquilla. Try my best. Oh, I can't pronounce any of this. Simon, how big is the difference between order brake max auto and max manual braking? Uh, a little more braking force required, and it does slow down ever so slightly more. Uh, but yeah, it's, there is a, a, a slight improvement in max manual braking. But that's full £3,000 pressure on the wheel brakes. The, the brakes are going to get very hot very quickly. But if you need it for whatever reason operationally, you use it. Baron Kia, thank you for us set simulations. That's the best way of doing it. Iceman says, do you prefer the new screens in the Max or the ones in the NG? Yeah, big fan of the, the new screens, especially when you're using the ND primarily. It's fantastic. You know, great situation where this big scale on the map. VSD is huge as well. Yeah, I do like them. As PF, I'm still getting used to because I don't fly that often when I do jump into the Max. I'm looking at the wrong places for the flap gauge. Obviously, the flap gauge in the NGs here and the order brake. The order brake select is down here because uh, there's no lower DU. And the flap setting is here. And we move the engine instruments based on who's pilot flying. So, pilot flying has them on his. Uh, well, I say it's ND. No, it's his right DU. Oh, Andre, if you could say, what's the shortest runway ever landed on a 73? I can't say, it's very much if I operate it, which is blindly obvious anyway. Ooh, look over there. Can you see that, guys? South America is coming into view. Fierce, great question. Does order brake target specific brake, specific braking force, or does it target a certain deceleration? It's certain. It's a rate of deceleration. Minimums, minimums, minimums. Approaching minimums. Casper, thank you very much for your membership. Three months. He says good evening. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Thank you very much for popping in. Cadet says, do you sometimes wish the 73 cockpit was bigger and had a tray table? <laughs> yes, absolutely, especially on the longer sectors. Uh, seems like your operator doesn't like leg room both in the cabin and the cockpit. Ah, I cannot discuss no more. Very, very cheeky of you. Uh, yes, some operators uh, operate a sort of high density specific model. So, Airlines UK, EasyJet, Step 2, Ryanair, and um, others have a sort of business class arrangement as well. When you're up front, none of it matters. I'm still flying the same plane. And I enjoy it. Martin, how scary is it to do manual braking in terms of skidding? If it's dry or wet, very low risk of skidding. It's only really on a contaminated runway. Uh, if it's standing water and contaminated, yeah. But but the uh, it has essentially ABS, you know, anti-skid, it's called. It's very effective. Very, very effective. Alpaca 2 Sierra might request descent. I got two, so I'm making the flight level 250, 250. And uh, flight level 250, I'll back at 20, Mike. So 250 checked, and we can push out into vent to initiate descent at 1,000 feet per minute until it captures the profile. Down we go.
Alpha 62 Echo Delta request descent. Alpha 62 Echo Delta uh, descent level 250. Yes, guys, if you are interested, if you're in Australia and enjoying your breakfast morning, I'll be streaming later tonight. If you're in Australia, that is, I'll be going to bed and streaming in the morning UK time. Uh, another stream all planned and uploaded already. Flying from Darwin to it's Khan, Ken, Khan. I need to learn how to pronounce that before the stream. Uh, in the spilled milk run events, which I do sometimes take part in. Yeah, I'll have a minimum rest between duties <laughs> and uh, travel to the other side of the world. And where it is noted that the runway has skid resistance, uh, I notice that the option for the takeoff performance is ever used in real life. Yes, so long as I've got approval. Um, and you, we at my operator will check the airfield brief and they, they do lapse these approvals. But yeah, you can use it. Steve M, 7.30 start for us, or am I thinking of something else? Uh, 8.30 in the morning. Have I set it for 7.30? Are you thinking of, are you thinking of something else? Uh, no, 8.30 next stream. Darwin to Khan Cancun. Andrea, any chance you're flying into Ren? Uh, cannot confirm nor deny. Uh, oh, Dave's enjoying the base in the sim. Yes, let me turn that up for a second. It is good, the BMPG, when it's just an idle. It's better in the cabin. Oh, yeah. Can you hear that base, guys? Pack up to Shore Mike, proceed direct to Gegis. Golf, Echo Golf, India Sierra. Uh, direct to Gegis, Alpaca to Sierra Mike. Uh, later on, we'd like to request the RMP Zulu approach for zero 01, please. Uh, this was civil RMP Yankee, runway zero 01. <laughs> okay, we'll plan for RMP Yankee, Alpaca to Sierra Mike. He said impossible, why? <laughs> Gegis execute 12,000, uh, sorry, 1200 feet high. <laughs> why can't he give us the Yankee? VNAV speed, that's all very good by BMBG. VNAV speed is the correct pitch mode with common VNAV. It'll pitch for the speed until it captures the profile. So anyway, let, let's pump in Yankee to keep him happy. Delta Niner X, your right hand, top three, 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 zero, continue calling final three, four, zero. So I'm just selecting our P Yankee chart in the back. All right, Bianca Niner 8. So it's, it's in front of you, yeah, all it takes to is exactly the same, guys. One, so Gegis Sacco is now to Sierra Mike 401. That's the new final approach, but it's called a FAP. Uh, final approach point, I believe. I, again, my operator, we don't fly these, but that's 2000 coded, and we do have the three degree path. The missed approach is now 500 feet, Sierra Mike 402. Thank Columbia 1940, Unit 7, 250. So imagine we've got the authorization required. Land Columbia 119 minimum is descent for level 250. Copy initiating descent. Right. Uh, new minimums then 450. Right. Uh, so, DA, you wouldn't need to add the 40 feet to this. It's a DA now. So 450 will set the lower minimums. So yeah, authorization required, no problem. 450. We briefed it. It's in the FMC, all coded correctly. We'd rebrief the chart in full. Uh, but the, the it's only the missed approach which has massively changed. Right, good. So, descent planning in the 737. Let's imagine you're all cadets. So, 104 miles to run. Ideally, it would be around 30,000 feet. This is showing 28 quite low on path. Uh, why it's showing so low, I don't know. But um, why is there such a difference here between... Let me just update that one more time. 102, yeah, ideally it would be around 30,000 feet. This would suggest we're low on profile, but this is showing high. I'm more inclined to believe this. Never quite trusted VDAV in the PMDG. Yes, this is the thing. I think PMDG have some sort of weird workaround, because we're doing 270 knots, and it's only giving me 2,000 feet per minute. Probably expect a little bit more than that. So I'm going to open the speed window, bug to 300, get back on path, and see what it does there. I'd expect it to be sort of showing me a little low on profile, certainly on profile, not high. But we'll go off VNAV here and see what rate of descent it gives us. Yeah, AC very loud, Chris. Yeah, I've just turned that down slightly. 
Quebec, uh, 3212, request descent. Oh, crikey, that's poor situation awareness on my behalf. I got 3212 in the defense, I got 4,000 feet per minute, that's no good. 250, back to 3212. Now I can bring the speed back. So yeah, you, you want to be doing no more than a thousand feet per minute and one to go. Now it's traffic 20 miles ahead, so that's okay. As long as he vacates properly. Yeah, deceleration, extra but mile. Two, one, two, for, for, for every Vegas. 10 knots. PMEG and VNAV, I think it has some weird workaround. Where you're in par following it, it always holds the speed perfectly, but the rate of descent's not quite what you'd expect. But the appearances that it's all working correctly. Any, any idea why ATC would accommodate the regular non-authorization RMP? Uh, no. Unless there's some prohibition or something. Right, anyway, we're being left high here. The aircraft ahead's not descending either. We'll just keep bringing our speed back. Scenery coming in. Is that aircraft going inbound as well? I'm feeling like we're getting high now. So 85 miles from top of descent would ideally be at 25,500 feet. We're actually below that. So I don't know why this is showing me so high on profile. Usually you're three times your height plus a few knots to slow down works out pretty nicely. <laughs> Joseph says every time I try to give a pilot an R nav approach, or for his approach, say so always had a brief ILS. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I'd say we're pretty much on profile now. Back this, up, this you my contact, Barranquilla approach, 119 decimal 1, half a great. 119 decimal 1, Alpaca 2 0, Mike. Can I take a one, dear? One, dear. No, I'm impressed by my Spanish. Uh, Barranquilla approach, hello, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, flight level 250 to Gegis. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by, just wait. Why is that show me so high? And the Avianca 98 well, a bit high now, should we start but programming the holding or is it not confirmed yet? Oh, someone hold it. Avianca 98822 is back holding over and loop. Uh oh. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, over I've got no extra look, fuel! Uh, <laughs> uh, Yanka 252, this is an M10 4000. Release hold over it and loop. Descent 4000, oh, release hold it and over loop. loop. Two aircraft holding it. Yanka 252. Yanka 9822, they continue descent to 6000. Expect hold yeah, uh, release all fine. hold over it and loop. There's no discontinuities. That's two aircraft I've heard enter the hold. Oh, wonderful. 2.5 tons of fuel. Right, well, I'm reducing speed further. <laughs> Why did I take standard fuel on a Vatsum event to an airport which is a tiny runway and no ability to backtrack? Why did I do this? Uh, Bogota arrival, this is Long Colombia 1194, track level 250, requesting more descent, uh, destination Simon Bolivar International Airport. Welcome. 1194, good day, right content, continue design as file, Edward 1. Welcome board, thanks for subscribing, OCS race. 2.8 tons left now, yeah, it's all good, it's all good. Continue descent as file, destination 011. Uh, Steve M says that flickering is driving you nuts. I didn't even notice that. Avianca 9584 sobre Anlook, iniciando aproximación sobre Utcon. Avianca 9584, Bolívar Torre 1187, buenas Bolívar Torre 1187, muchas gracias. I checked it about two minutes ago, you should stand by. Avianca 9584. Exceeding crits and crits is exactly. I remember you saying, what's the worst that could happen? If you're being held by ATC, is it common for you to slow down? Yeah, very common. It's the best way of removing energy from the aircraft. Lovely. 
Yeah, let's see what happens. At least holding higher will burn less fuel. That is true. That is true. Um, listen, to me, did you say something about Mayday fuel? Now, yeah, how the situation goes is so. Uh -huh. So, May Mayday fuel is the last thing you want to do unless you have to. So, Mayday fuel is when you are going to land with less than your final research. You're landing with less than 30 minutes fuel. There's sort of a breakdown of steps before you do that, sort of three steps. The first one is to, six, two, to get an estimated uh, approach time to calculate whether to commit or divert. You then have a, uh, a call called minimum fuel. So the call is, is Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, minimum fuel. And that means that you are going to be landing with over 30 minutes, but any changes to your current estimated approach time two, or your current uh, planned uh, routing uh, could yeah, get you into a mayday fuel uh, situation, then the it's mayday fuel. Planned at the moment to take up the hold at Gegis. Release a hold over Gegis, descend and maintain to... So that's the aircraft ahead, being told to hold at Gegis. Now, and this is where it gets quite realistic, so I've got a balance between realism and... Because I, I want to land here. Do we hold at Unlook? Yeah, we're going to hold at Unlook. What's VMD in the aircraft? The upspeed? For all intents and purposes, Andre, yes. But we don't have the upspeed because we're above 20,000 feet. So 220 knots, I don't really want to go any slower than that. This guy sounds quite saturated because I've heard a few people check in. I've checked okay, in two, three minutes four, ago, he's forgotten nine, about me. Today, right, content, continue, I'll file to fly level 2, Virgil. I'll file to fly level 2, 4, 2, 4, 9. So 2 tons is our alternate. Anyway, so approach. we can hold for 15 um, I'm minutes. 98, 22. Should we continue our approach or should we start holding? No, it's very hot in Avianca 9822. I'm just going to check in and say we're going to hold at Gegis. 11,000 feet high. Avianca 252, parental approach. Avianca 252. James, the process, how would you do, do a really diversion? Hold, hold uh, it, uh, update the route, well, plan it first and you go to the route page, one. Update your ICO to your Sorry new Sorry for that, turning into holding, Avianca 2.5. Release, hold in, maintain 4,000, please. Maintain 4,000, Avianca 2.5. I'll check in and tell them we're holding at Gegis. Avianca 9822, do you want us to um, keep at 6,000 or descend to 4,500? Andrew, so the, the flap speed is the minimum drag speed for that configuration. <laughs> Again, for all intents and purposes, yes, but, you, you know, VMD is, is going to be clean for the minimum fuel burn. Uh, to 4, as soon as you got flaps out, your fuel burn starts increasing, and you shows. can't use any FMC fuel Mantain predictions. 6,000 and release all over it and loop. Can anyone have a little look on the Vatsim map and see what the situation is ahead? Stop holding at I don't think they're used to this amount of traffic. Avianca 9822, continue to the hold over it and loop. Continue holding over on loop, having a 9822. Black Columbia 1194, expect a hold over on loop. <laughs> it's how many aircraft? And that's, and that's at, uh, that's aircraft holding both at Gegis and on loop. Here. Uh, for the left. Hold for uh, Black Columbia 1194. But I'll get this. I'm not hearing. When it's busy, you should hear the controller constantly talking, but it's silence. <laughs> Radar, Buenos Aires, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. Fly level 250 to Gegis to hold at Gegis. Sierra Mike, continue descend to flight level 220. Descend flight level 220, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. And release hold over Gegis. Uh, holding at Hegis at 220, I'll pack a 20 mic, we'll go. So, 220, we'll just do a very gentle descent, vertical speed, and we'll get the hold in there from C and five see what two. happens. Okay, I've got 253 Yankee Room is 01, continue descent to 3000. So, uh, hold. Descent, Next two, hold. Five, now, be careful with this. When you press hold, that's actually the hold for the missed approach. So, be careful with that. Press next Black hold, one, one, Gegis, and then enter there. So let's check the chart. Eight, Zero nine seven right hand uh, turn. Release hold over it and look. Uh, uh, leg time. It's not specified here, so we'll put. Well, actually, we're going to be high. So we're going to put one point five minutes. There we go. Excuse. Holds in. 
I'll deal with the entry. Just about a direct entry. And we'll go from there. The blue sign one is the missed approach as well. Oh, Tidfu. Yeah, ATC is getting slammed now. Poor guy. You can tell an ATC is slammed or saturated because he's really busy. He's got about five or six aircraft in the hold and there is silence. He should be giving aircraft. This is talking about real life. Every aircraft in the hold he should be giving estimated approach times for everyone so they can work out the, the fuel situation. Um, constant talking as well. Is this the first sector? Yes, Brendan. It could be. It depends how long we hold for. I don't want to a flight level 4,500 feet. Latan, land column 1194. Uh, descent maintain 8,000 and it's release hold over and loop. And put, you know, the, uh, okay, it, it, you know uh, non native English speaker as well. Anyway, 8, our destination is down there somewhere. Can I quite work it out on the ND? Oh, no, it's a little bit further off to the left. I can't actually see it. Well, stand there, but look at the scenery of South America and Colombia. Yeah, there's the airport because there's all the boats which were added on with the scenery. Yeah, the airport's there somewhere. Want to go? Pretty much a beam now, aren't we? Could be our last sector ever. <laughs> Could be. There you go. Very good by PMDG. Look at this. Hold available 14 minutes. That's how long until we get to our uh, final reserve. Uh, sorry, our reserves to divert and land with our final reserve intact. So we've got 14 minutes to play with. And this is very typical for block fuel, minimum block fuel, on a, on a short sector like this. So yeah, it could be interesting, guys. This could be interesting. I might have a poll in about 10 minutes' time when we enter the hold, or 10 minutes after we enter the hold. Do I carry on online and divert based off the situation, or log offline to get into destination, fly the RMP approach? Copy, 125. Anyway, there's 220. We are very high. There's an aircraft in the hold, only 2,000 feet below us. This is a bit of a PMDGism with the <laughs> hold. Uh, it looks like a heartbeat. Look at this land here as well. Holding a 220 is never a good sign. <laughs> this is one Columbia with one nine. I hope no one has a connecting flight, brilliant. For the approach, what do you want me to do? <laughs> land Columbia 1194. Again. Release a hold over it and loot and He's maintain playing please hold. It sounds three. like release hold, but uh, release, it means cancel hold. I already cancel hold. Uh, he, yeah, it's English. He's saying hold. please sounds like release. Maintain hold over and loop. Maintain hold over yeah, and loop. Yeah, guys, English. It's his please sounds like release. Is it a Spanish thing with the P's? I don't know. Right, I'm looking at a map. There is two okay, aircraft okay, holding uh, myself and another alpaca at Gegis. There seems to be two aircraft holding. There's, well, there's four aircraft holding. I have not heard one aircraft be cleared for the approach since we've logged in. Would this be the closest you've cut in? Cut it whilst flying a simulator fuel-wise? Yes, I always take extra on busy vats of events. And I won't say, you know what? It's a busy vats of events. Oh, I won't be that busy, will it? There's aircraft holding all the way down there. Look. But this aircraft, there's no one, there's only us two in the hold. Why is he still at 20,000 feet? <laughs> he should be down at 4,000 feet. <laughs> Good news is, look, we need to descend. And obviously, when we start descending, we'll uh, cleared for the RMP approach, Yankee, or we stay on hold? Expecting three minutes more, Avianca uh, 982. Uh, so Avianca's got Copy three that. more minutes. We're entering the hold now at Gegis. So I'll let him know, see what he says. Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike entering the hold at Gegis when available. Request descent. 2 Sierra Mike, expect to approach in approximately 30 minutes. Roger, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. 30 minutes! <laughs> 
Oh, oh decisions. So that that is thirty minutes. So if you were exposed to this situation in real life. You'd have to make a decision whether I to commit or divert. Now, obviously, 30 minutes, Aviaka and I have 12 minutes until I get to my final, my reserves. Okay, so I have to make a decision when we're approaching this fuel figure. Now, if that is guaranteed estimated approach time, 30 minutes, then fine. But if ATC then increase that that decision and you've committed, you then have to declare Mayday. You have to go Mayday, 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 I'll pack a two chair mic. Look, we've committed, we're gonna land with less than thirty minutes, you know. And you know, it I hope I hope no one blocks the runway. It's as simple as that. But when you declare Mayday it does open up more options. So you are, um, military you airports, disused airports, you know, if it had to be like this. So yeah, it's Okay, that is in the same thing. This is unusual that. this is a flight sim related issue. You're not gonna get holes like this unless the runway's closed. Uh, but yeah, let's imagine if the airport was closed, runway was Probably closed, the estimated approach time was open in 30 minutes, but there was a chance of that getting worse, I'd be diverting straight Back away. Um, so yeah, I could do a poll. That pan isn't applicable for this. So yeah, 30 minutes is too long. Uh, and I, uh, yeah, I'd have to definitely commit okay, uh, to this airport. And I don't want to yeah, commit to this airport Delta with this level of ATC. For, uh, yeah, and, uh, all those sort of yeah, things. So we've got 2.4 tons of fuel, 30 minutes. Uh, can I do it? How much fuel do you have until I get to reserves? So just to so you're all happy and aware of what we're talking about here. Uh, so this fuel figure here, reserves, this is how much we're waiting until. When we get down to 1945 kilos, that means I ha I can then divert to my destination and I'll I'll arrive with my final reserve fuel, which is 30 minutes. This is the, what we must protect at all costs. We must protect our fin res. This is your final reserves. That's 30 minutes of fuel remaining, holding at 1500 feet above aerodrome level. We must always protect this at all costs. A mayday call is applicable if you are going to land with less this this fuel figure. So at the moment, if we land, we're going to land with 2.2. So we've got an extra 35 minutes until we land, at least until we have to make that mayday call. Um, so yeah, this is this is going to be polled. I can either divert, land, or hold, and then I'll end up, I'll end up doing the inevitable and diverting. So it, it's up to you. How far is the divert, says Chris? Not far. Uh, it is Sierra Kilo, Sierra Mike, Barak, but it's it's who we're talking to, basically. It, I think it's off to the east. It's, I have very poor geographical knowledge around here. Uh, yeah, it's just off to the north. No, actually, what is my... No, my alternate is... No, it's to the west. Sierra Kilo, Bravo, Quebec. It's just there. It's actually off the left-hand side. Our alternate is down, down there. That's our alternate here. So our turn is down there, it's not far. Uh, Barrett Cleaner. Our destination is is uh, on the nose, here. So that's our destination, and our alternate is here. Okay. But it, it's so quiet on the frequency, that's my concern. He's number we're number four, hold for thirty minutes. I can't hear anyone talking. What's going on? <laughs> so yeah, uh, your choice guys. I can either commit thirty minutes divert but I'll probably call it a day or log off fly the approach offline land and do the second sector um, because yes it is half ten here at night yeah okay stay up log off and fly the RMP divert oh it's interesting Yeah, I, I, the, the only reason I'm thinking of logging off is this controller is clearly saturated. No offence to the guy, it is completely dead on this frequency. Listen, it's complete silence. Um, there should be aircraft being vectored on. I mean, I'm looking on the VATSIM map. Is actually anyone on the approach right now? I'm, I'm on the VATSIM map. There is no one on the approach. Zero people. Like, have a look at the VATSIM map. Why is no one on the approach? <laughs> Exactly, James. Why is ATC keeping everyone in hold? I don't know. For, uh, there's, there's not even a departure. There's no one lining up, backtracking on the runway. There's not a single person final right now. Um, 
So let me just. Echo one nine one one four. Just looking for the hub. Just gonna have a look here. Uh, we're ready to send lower for all the echo one nine one four. Echo one nine one four. You will expect uh, a folding over and look. Uh, one. Sorry, uh, so just to show you here. Let me just share my my map here with what we've got right, here. Okay, so we're, we're uh, in the holes here. A, I'll pack it up so on there. Uh, UPS. The airport's public. there. I think there's one on the approach there. No, he's holding. There's not one aircraft on the approach. Got a key approach. I'll pack it 3212. So yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to log off then. You know, I, I do feel for the controller, but I don't think he's exposed. Three, two, one, two, continue flying uh, zero nine or zero. To this, I'll let him know. Heading zero nine zero. I'll take it three two. Avianca nine two, sir nine eight two two, please stop. Stop the motorcycle. Avianca nine eight twenty two, say again. I know, A22, please transponder mode Charlie. <laughs> he's on hard day and he's ATC between meals. <laughs> Our transponder is on mode Charlie. Uh, I think I need 22. Okay, no worries. I got two for two over there. I, the Sorry, reason is if I dive I don't want oh, to. Two for two. This, this controller is. Maxed. Two for two, you're clear to approach on ground right. with your one? That's the first aircraft. We are off. now cleared. Uh, we were cleared. Uh, there were uh, misinformation from uh, the ATC before. We are cleared for the RMP and That's the first aircraft I've been cleared clear on five. the approach in about 15 two minutes. There's only uh, one control on Roy, one, yeah. one, one approach one, control on one tower controller, and that's it. Anyway, look, 2.2 tons. Point We've only got no, no additional hold time uh, available one, now. Uh, one zero. 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 So we'd, we'd have to now make a decision to land an IP diverter. If this is real life, I'll be diverting. But we'll we'll come in and land offline. I'll just let him know. Clear on the Arnav Yankee approach runway 01, maintain uh, 180 knots until 5 mile final landing and then 822. Tiny Reduce as minimum as possible speed. You are clear to RMP. Off. I, don't, I don't want to just log off and then he's looking for me and it increases his workload. Third RMP Yankee runway zero one. I make a ninety-eight meter. approach. I think it'll be less than thirty minutes, Moody. Well, we've been holding for ten now and we're still twenty-two thousand feet. I mean, it's going to be even if I got number one for the approach. Take me twenty-two minutes to land. Right three three zero on the ground one two zero. Oh, let's just see. Uh, let's just see. Down to two point two tons. Was that aircraft in the hold with me? Has he started to send yet? We were having a little issue with uh, radar coverage, so we are now trying to uh, give you a sequence to the airport, trying to respect the last turn were attended by the ATC, okay? So please keep calm, we will try to get you as fast as possible at the runway. That's not even me. Roger, Avianca 120. And for Avianca 1914 Heavy, just to confirm we are holding over an uh, and loop. Uh, how much fuel is a minimum do you have before we call an emergency? It's not a set amount of fuel, Joshua, it's when you're going to land with your, your fin res. Less than fin res, which is one tonne. Right, there you are, look, using reserve fuel, so that's telling me, right, now basically, the amount of fuel you have is the amount you need to divert and land with fin res. Right, that's the aircraft ahead of us. Okay, you will approach in something like 18 minutes for now. Yeah, that's too So continue sending to 6,000 feet. Descend 6,000 feet and confirm was that for 1,8 minutes, so I'll back to 6,000 now, this is better now. <laughs> but yeah, to be fair, to divert now would be fine because we're obviously very high. So your fin res amount, sorry, your, your reserves amount, using reserve fuel, remember, is based off you diverting from your missed approach point on the previous approach. Uh, and after 4,000, report, reaching 4,000 people. Yeah, okay, fair enough. If they're having radar issues, then fair enough. But we'll, we'll log off and 
and see how we get on departures. Because we've been talking to him for 20 minutes now and we've only been told to hold and that was it, not an, not another instruction at all. Uh, contact tower 19.7, thank you very much, I think at 98.2. You're welcome. I'm sort of half tempted just to leave, to, leave it to see what happens, so I'm like, oh, I'm curious. Yeah, he's pushing the tin now, praying for him. Tower Avianca 9822 on the RMP for runway 01 arrival. Yeah, what, Moody, not only is there one in the hold ahead of me, there's, there's, we're holding and then there's two other aircraft holding in um, another place. So we're, we're holding here, two of us, and there's two aircraft holding there oh, as well. That's weird. Sorry about that, 9822. Leave it until Finres, then lock off. That's a bit tight. <laughs> So this is the this is the fuel figure in now. This mustn't go below 1.2. Brief your mid air. Now that is definitely cheating. I'm not doing that. Oh, I was hoping to have landed by now. Three, two, one, two, over. Barranquilla. Leave it until zero. They glide. <laughs> <laughs> What was that for? I'm, I'm just sort of, you know, just seeing how it plans out. I'll, get, I'll, I'll uh, just get an estimated approach time again and then all the same. <laughs> Demonstrate ditching the water, brilliant. Colombian 1104, uh, can you please confirm your estimate for 2 at 4,000 feet? Um, I need about uh, 3 minutes to descend. <laughs> Stefan Ledger's 73 is a pretty glider. Roger that. <laughs> Pacas 2 Sierra Mike, over the Varangia. Uh, go ahead, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. 2 Sierra Mike, descend to 1,000 feet, initial QNH 102. At Senate, altitude 1, 2,000 feet, QNH 1012. I know you're busy. Do you have an estimated approach time, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike? 2 Sierra Mike, please do not me for a first time right now. I'm trying to do my best and to get you on the runway as fast as possible right now. I think probably in less than 5 15 minutes you will land, okay? Okay, thank you, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. Less than 15 you're minutes? Welcome. Okay. 15 minutes, 1.8 tons, we're going to burn 600 kilos in 15 minutes, 1.2 tons, that's so close to calling a mayday, so I'd be, based on what he's told me right now, in real life, I'd be making the following call, in real life right now, I'd be saying, based off your instructions, Barankina, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, declaring minimum fuel. Now, the minimum fuel call is not a mayday, okay? Minimum fuel is not a mayday. So the call would be very clearly Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, declaring minimum fuel. This tells ATC one thing, okay? Based off the current instruction you've given me, I can land with my final reserves intact, just 1.2 tons, 1.3 tons, but it tells ATC any further changes to my cleared, or what you've cleared us to, so estimated approach time 15 minutes, I will be declaring Mayday fuel, okay, so so he said approach in 15 minutes, in 15 minutes 600 kilos, that's 1.2, our, fin, uh, our fin res is 1 ton I think it was 1.1 so so I'd be declaring minimum fuel and I will have now committed I am now committed to landing at Santa Marta diversion you can't okay you 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 you'll be diverting with and landing with your fin rest cuz I'm right over the airfield now barracleen is close you could declare mayday and request barracleen and get a direct heading to a 10 mile final so go from there now martin why not inform atc the reason is he is purely saturated and I do not want him to have to worry about this sort of stuff in real life absolutely you're worrying about it I am responsible for the lives of nearly 200 people and an aircraft I will be making this call in Vatsim world where this guy's clearly worked out to the max I don't want him and I don't know if he will understand what a minimum fuel call is uh, not all parts of the world even have or recognize the minimum fuel call uh, but yeah that is the call I'd be making now minimum fuel we've committed to Santa Marta and you've based on our estimated approach 
we'll be landing but, now with uh, 1.3 tons. So that's the call we'd be making now. Um, so let's see what happens. You guys would like me to do it, wouldn't you? Uh, does that fin res give you enough for a garan? No. Well, it does, but you're, you'll be doing you'll be going into a um, a visual circuit to land after that point. But y you know, you could ask uh, about a million different questions. You know, oh, what if now the engine fails? Oh, what happens if you now go around? Oof, what happens if the runway is now closed? You know, there's there's a million different possibilities and combinations. They're unlikely to happen, but once you've You've, once you've made your mayday call, you, you know you're landing with less than 30 minutes. Uh, minimum approach speed is uh, 127 for a back 320. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, Joseph, you said it. In real life, ADC knows what minimum fuel means. Don't delay this plane, but I wouldn't bet on a VATSIM controller understand that. Correct. He's going to think I want priority or something like that, which I understand he's not going to give us. Let's see how this pans out. At the moment, we've com we have now committed to Santa Marta. We are, based on his estimated approach time, going to land with more than 30 minutes of fuel remaining. We're going to land with, with 1.3 tonnes. So, so let's see how it pans out. I might just call it the one sector now though guys. I, I know you want to do two but by the time I land it's going to be pff, past 11, set up, yeah, all we'll six. I'm streaming first thing in the morning. Uh, Afo, yeah, there's no pan call associated with any fuel issue. This isn't, it's either minimum fuel or mayday, that's it. And before that an estimated approach time. The only time you make the mayday call is when your usable fuel is calculated to be less than your final reserve, your planned final reserve, which is... Uh, so you only make the mayday call when you're going to land less than this, 1,084 kilos, let's call it 1.1. So if this drops here, SKSM below 1.1, or it says what, if, as soon as that says 1.1, we're declaring a, a mayday. But don't forget, we're descending now, so Perfect. the fuel flow is a lot lower. So we're only burning about 900 kilos an hour, which will help we'll go from there. So you're diverting to bed, we'll see. Yeah, just uh, we'll see. I was planning on landing at half past, about 10 minutes ago. I knew you guys Let's see if he changes his estimated approach time. So any time in on the line, I've never had to do a minimum fuel or mayday fuel call, but if you had to make a minimum fuel call. But this sort of shows you, you know, we take this amount of fuel every day, and very rarely we have delays, and if we anticipate any disruption delays, whether we always take on a lot extra. But usually holding like this is incredibly rare. So yeah, guys, do excuse me, I'm going to do the one sector the, now, just because I do have another street to plan for, I was going to do it after two sectors. But I think, as someone said, this is a bit something you've enjoyed uh, in explaining. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments section afterwards as well, and I'll, I'll do my best to get back to you. Yeah, that AFO would be a great excuse. I'm not happy with this VNAV estimation of the profile. But yes, we are 10,000 feet. Yeah, mm, feet. Mm, 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 feet. Mm, mm, feet. Mm, mm, feet. Mm, Thank you, 94 takes. So, kind of interesting. Dovey, you would never say that to the passengers. Would you be informing any of the passengers about this? Never. Absolutely Roger, not. Uh, Jeff, direct, uh, Sasko, uh, Down to 1.9 tons. Remember the flight time was 1 hour and 20, we've been airborne for an extra 15 minutes now. Seatbelt signs on. We'd have done a PA say, oh, due to uh, airspace congestion we've been uh, delay. We've been told to delay the approach. Yeah, I hope that all makes sense with you anyway. 
4,000 feet, number four, I'll be on for one, two, zero. Uh, so he's number four, and he's been told to descend to four thousand feet. Yeah, I got one, nine, nine, one, four, nine, one, <laughs> was he telling it? Was he when he said he estimated the approach time in fifteen minutes? Now this is no offence to this guy, but this is the difference between a Vatsim controller and a professional controller, or, or one that might not be clued. The estimated approach time could AC gives you is usually very accurate. So in real life, they give you an estimated approach time. That is your estimated approach time. You know, that doesn't change. Now, he said estimated approach time in, what was it, 15 minutes, about 7 minutes ago? Let's see what happens, if he's accurate with that. What's our best hold speed? I think you've ever had every knock can help. 212. Thanks Vince, 27 months managed to catch some of the stream live whilst they're making breakfast, it's now biting stuff, thank you, we'll see what happens. Right, it's something different isn't it, and it's, it's really good for me to discuss and talk about the, the, call, the calls we have to make. Let's we'll see what happens next. So over the three step processes of, of sort of fuel issues, we've done step one already. Step one is request estimated approach time. We've got the estimated approach time, should be in five minutes. That means you've cleared approach in five minutes, okay. Now, if there's any issue with that, your next call is your minimum fuel call, which we've discussed already. I would have made that call now, based on our clearance. And, and the minimum fuel call is sort of your, your last line of defense before you have to declare Mayday, okay? It's basically saying, look, you've given us an approach time, that's now changed. Any changes to our new estimated approach time will perhaps commit us to using our final reserve fuel. Making that call. Uh, radar heading 215 degrees, descend to 8,000 feet to Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. Now this is a good sign. So 8,000 feet checked. We could be getting vectored onto the approach. If that's the case, we're alright. We've got to preserve that 1.1 turns. Thank you very much for that donation to uh, myself from Tom Hates Cats, one pound one. Thank you, sir. Right, so now we've been told to leave the hold. I'm just going to route direct to exit hold, actually. Use the exit hold function. Actually, no, because we're just going to go Sanko. Execute. Now, using reserve fuel, that is correct. We are using it now. We'll go from there afterwards. So, we're still quite high. I'm, because he's vectoring us away, I don't want to dive down too early. <laughs> 1 1.9 tons. So, as I was saying, we've done, we've done the estimated approach time. In reality, as discussed, we would have made the minimum fuel call because we've been given an estimated approach time, which is keeping our reserves safe, but any changes to that clearance he gave us, we would then have to make the Mayday call. And the Mayday call, don't forget, is only ever made when you land less or you are going to now land less than your, your fin res. the only time we make the Mayday call. So that fin res is 1.1 tons at the moment. We're landing with 1.8. So about 15 minutes extra flight time we've got until we need to make that call. And when you make that mayday call, 80 to give you everything you need. Direct to final um, to a nearby airport. Direct. It gives them a lot more flexibility to do what they need to do with you. Number three reduced to uh, final approach speed uh, on the uncle one two zero. Right, so still flying away from the airport, we'll keep updating it. Really important in the 737 under vectors to keep updating the FMC. 1.7 tonnes using reserve fuel we know about. 10,300 for 8,000 feet, post cruise check. So fuel, four pumps, lights on, pop on the Lego. Uh, angular bank is set to 25 degrees, pressurisation is all good, it's 34 degrees down there. Yes, it's not like the airport I've committed to is uh, the perfect destination, it's a 1700 yeah, metre runway, 40 metres wide, at least the weather's good. <laughs> Check's complete. Hey, it's a lot more relaxing doing it in a desktop sim than a real aircraft as well. Touch wood, I've never had to do it in the real plane yet.
Uh, ah, this is Ted's. We're going to go to uh, Tower 118.7 and uh, 160 knots, Avianca 120. So, Avianca, where was he? Let's see what happens with us. I don't like the fact that we're still going away from the airport. <laughs> There we are, look! <laughs> down to 1.8. When it gets start getting any lower, we're going to get electric hydraulic pumps coming down as well. Because they're, they're, when they get below sort of 500 kilos. Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, how much longer are they uh, heading? 2 Sierra Mike, now left. Heading 145 on your left. And continue heading to 6,000 feet. Left 145 degrees, descent to altitude 6,000 feet, out back to Sierra Mike. So 6,000 feet, check to heading 140. Left heading 140 degrees, descent altitude 6,000 feet, out back to Sierra Mike. So. So really want to shallow this rate of descent now. Every little bit helps here. If that was. Uh, are, you, are you going to regret not declaring minimum delta fuel, delta Martin? In real life, as discussed several times, I would have made that call by now. In in Vatsim world, we'll you're not going to give you priority in that situation. Perfect. It's just the way it works okay, in Vatsim, and I don't want to add to the workload here. It won't make any difference. Probably would have just annoyed people saying no. You should have talked more extra fuel. But from an operational point of view today, you wouldn't need extra fuel. From a Vatsim event point of view, I should have taken lots of extra fuel. Package to Sierra Mike, drop information, 6,000, uh, sorry, uh, at 11 o'clock, there's a Boeing 27 for your company, 6,000 feet, leaving 6,000 feet, 4,000 feet. Now about to uh, turn left is the number 3, your number 4 for approaching ground with your one. Roger, I'll pack a 2 Sierra Mike, number 4. <laughs> Let's see. the approach. Hello from Delta 441. We are at flight level 250, about 39 miles uh, south of Edvar. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> so based off our estimated approach time, given from the controller 15 minutes ago, where we're, I based my decision, we would be now Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, clear for the approach. And I'd be on the approach at 1.8 tons, great. Didn't have to declare I made it on approach. Now, I'm number four. <laughs> This is where right now, where the difference in, between VAT sim and, and real life is a big difference here with accurate estimated okay, approach times. Uh, so I'm behind him. Over to control 128.4, Avianca 9767, muy gracias. I think he means you're number four to the runway, not number four for the approach. Joseph, I think that's still the same thing. If four aircraft need to make the approach, Delta, four, four, one, just to still got to do the same one approach. Out, sorry, Edgar, <laughs> one Alpha is for conventional approach. I mean, they are approach, something like that. Uh, can you just confirm you will continue Edgar, uh, yeah. uh, one Alpha? Let's, let's just see. I, I mean, this is getting uh, unrealistic now. Continue with Edgar, one Alpha, no, unless there's continue. another one you'd like us to use. Uh, uh, Delta 441. 441, okay, continue descending by Edvar 1 Alpha. Thanks, welcome, you uh, Chan. Hope you're doing well. Two bumps as a member. Thank you for your support as you join in with about. We've got about 45 minutes of fuel remaining until the engine flame. Uh, you're talking about glide, we still go forget we have 45 minutes of fuel. It doesn't sound like much, and I wouldn't want to be flying around with this amount of fuel. But we're not going to go out, fall out the sky for another 45 minutes. They were approaching and expecting the VOR for runway 1. Delta 441. And we're gonna get vectored behind this guy. Uh, just reducing to two turn knots, South Park 6 to Echo Delta. 6 to Echo Delta, Roger, continue to 1 0 knots. Uh, Shaman, would a situation ever arise where you consider shutting down the engine to save you? Doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Uh, continue at 2 1 0 knots, still further instructions, South Park 6 to Echo Delta. Sorry, Park 6 to Echo Delta. Please maintain a two zero zero knots and on your left by direct and loop and descending to four thousand feet. Uh, we're unable. Uh, we're 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 uh, on minimum fuel here. I have to configure flaps. So can I maintain two one zero knots, please? Alpaca two zero, Mike, and just save a direct. 
Cruiser Mike, there is no problem. So on your left side, that I can look, and I ah. I received your uh, fuel information. Thank you, Drake, and Lupal Packer Two Zero Mike. Uh, good job today. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So much. Good. Uh, so direct on a Yankee American and look execute and the bond shop execute. Right. If we can sort of just keep going towards Anlup like this, we're landing with 1.6, that's okay. Again, we would have made that minimum fuel call now. Remember, 1.1 tonnes is our 30 minutes of fuel remaining. We're arriving with 1.6. So 200 knots would have meant flaps. Flaps going to increase our fuel burn. We want to stay above the upspeed. Oh, just proceed to send 4,000. Let's see. <laughs> sip, sip, NG, sip. <laughs> let's let's see what happens. The volume of the controller is very considerably. Uh, Ruben, uh, Banuelos, welcome aboard, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for becoming a member. Glad you enjoyed the content. Right, 1.7 again, minimum fuel call. In reality, if I was in this situation, again, I would have made the minimum fuel call. We are hopefully, oh, he's only 10 miles ahead, so if he gets cleared approach, no way is he going to land and backtrack in time. Let's see what happens. Can't go any slower. If we're getting straight in, this, this, if we get straight in from this, it will work. I don't like the fact there's an aircraft ahead. <laughs> Anyway, I might re rename this title Montego Bega to Santa Marta, a tight fuel situation. <laughs> Why'd you level off at 7,400? No, we're on a very shallow descent here, trying to save as much fuel as possible. So the higher the st higher I stay for the longer I can stay, the better, because it, it, uh, the uh, engine's more efficient. So we're just waiting for the profile to come back up, and then we'll, we'll start descending on that profile. FedEx is lining up for takeoff. Yes, keep me informed, guys. Good situation awareness. We've got FedEx lining up. Is an aircraft ahead of me? Is there anyone else ahead of the aircraft in front of me as well? Oh, there is. There's, three, there's UPS, there's an alpaca, and then there's me. So if we keep the speed back as long as possible, that would be great. An aircraft just finished backtracking as well. QNH is 1010. Thank you. I thought you said 1012. There's that aircraft ahead, and he is 10 miles. I don't want him going any closer. Five knots. <laughs> Remember, the aircraft have got to backtrack, but if you can plan this with max braking, max auto, you could make that exit there at Bravo. That's about 1,100, 1,200 metres. It's doable. Number 10, clear to land. Ah, yes, the US way. 1.6 tons. I'm Barranquilla, American 9852, just to confirm the approach is going to be the ILS 01. 9852, do you want the ILS? I'm wrong with you. Coming up to the profile now as well. Yes, please. Uh, for us, it's going to be ILS 01, if it's possible, please. Okay, are clear to ILS runway one in Cartagena, report cross. Yeah, Did you know there's actually a QH checklist for this? Uh, it basically says, um, okay, thank you so much. We are you either have low fuel or you've got a fuel peak. So obviously if you're the cruising here, that's what not right. Uh, and it says basically avoid high nose, like uh, high nose up attitudes and, and make thrust changes slowly and smoothly to ensure that the fuel pumps don't get uncovered. Package to Max, for the information uh, from your company, 4006 right now, uh, it's the number 3 on approach sequence. Uh, can you please uh, confirm you have the traffic presentation? Yeah, I can see the traffic uh, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, we can reduce further now. No, you don't need to reduce right now, you, have just, you are just on separation. And uh, continuous in 4000 feet, you are clear to RMP Jankin runway 01, report uh, next to Stadco. 
Uh, Send 4,000 feet, uh, cleared RMP Yankee runway uh, 01. We'll start reducing our speed now and we'll repu report at SACO, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. So, 4,000 feet checked. Sure, uh, I am slowing down now, just to increase separation. We're coming up to our profile anyway, so that will certainly help. Uh, flap 1, flap 5. And we cleared approach as well, so we can descend further once we get established. So, we're going to arm VNAV, speed window open. And we're at the flat five speed break. now. Uh, Kirich, hope, hope for the best. Yeah. We're all okay. I got you brilliant. <laughs> this controller, the other controller did a good job. This guy is getting a job done. He sounds like he's getting everyone in. No! Oh! It's pulling up. Ah. So 1.6, remember. Fin re Finrez was 1.1, landing with 1.5. So even if we go around, we still have enough for a radar vectored circuit before we can probably even do a mayday call. So yeah. Again, it looks super tight, and but aircraft are exposed to these situations before. So if you ever look on flight radar or, or read a report on an aircraft declaring mayday fuel, it's because they've landed with less than they've they're landed with less than fin res 1.1. So these aircraft are exposed to these situations every day. So I hope my sort of explanation would sort of talk about or, or makes you understand the sort of decisions we make you know our decision to commit was based on us making an estimated approach maybe five ten minutes ago but still with, with plug fuel we, you know, we can fly for an extra 30 minutes until we really get a bit to a tight decision making. going to be damn close yeah but still we still haven't had to make the mayday final reserve fuel anyway flat five established 1.6 tons landing with 1.5 We're being cleared for RMP approach. We're being cleared RMP approach. Yeah, let's get the charts up here. So, being cleared 4,500. We've actually been cleared, cleared down to 4,000 feet. And next, we can go down to SATGO at 3,000. One mile before and up, we can set 3,000 feet. God, the volume changes massively with this controller. Oops, just realised the minimums are slightly wrong. Sure, Mike, you can continue approach, uh, please. Maintain one eight zero knots until zero Mike four zero one. You have you only no. to raise your speed. Uh, too much. <laughs> Roger, we're accelerating to one eighty knots. Cleared RMP Yankee. Alpaca two zero Mike. No <laughs> fuel flow increasing. <laughs> fuel quantity decreasing. <laughs> Uh, is it a problem if your landing weight is less than your zero fuel weight? <laughs> yes, Andrea. I'll I'll let you try and work that one out. If your if your landing weight is less than your zero fuel weight, what have you landed? <laughs> what you landed without any of? <laughs> the 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 clue is in the first letter Z, <laughs> and the second letter F. <laughs> ah no! Master caution. Ah oh! Overheat. Electric hydraulic. Anyone would like to know or hazard a guess as to why that is illuminated? That is true. That happens in the real aircraft. Very good PMDG. Oh, I need to be concentrating here. 3,000 feet. VNAV path. That's fine. Sucking air. <laughs> yep, fuel's calling the hydraulic pumps. It's dropped down a certain level, and the electric hydraulic pump has started overheating. So we can actually turn that off. Uh, yes. Actually, I need to double check what the QRH says. Uh, overheating low pressure. Would I turn it off? I, don't I would. Know. Just it. We've still got the engine driven pump. There we are. So, I am going to start slowing down now. So, approaching descent coming up. 500 feet. VNAV path speed into So, the aircraft is on final. There's the pappies. Great freeway scenery available ahead. Uh, 118.7 Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, no contact Bolivar Tower, 118.7 Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, thanks for your help today, can I take a one here? He, d he doesn't understand the panic in my voice. Alpaca 62 Echo Delta, after 1X0, taxi to the Very good, but yeah, we'll do the one state state, we'll park on stand, if you have questions about what we did today, that'll be the other one, won't it? Uh, <laughs> 
feel free to just ask them. We'll go through that decision making process we went through. Good good learning point for everyone. Right, almost established. We're just passing Satro, 3,000 feet. Next point is the final approach point. Again, I wouldn't be authorised to fly this at my operator. But it's all looking good. We'll do a height check past 2,000 feet. Uh, what's the name of the tower? Uh, Bolivar Tower, good day, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. Establish RMP Yankee Runway 01. Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike, Bolivar Tower, good afternoon. Uh, runway 01, wind 010 at 13, QNH 1010. Temperature 32. Oh. Continue approach. <laughs> uh, continue approach, Alpaca 2 Sierra Mike. Well, that was a lot of information. Uh, usually when you uh, check in, they might give you the QNH, but uh, that's all I need. I was hoping it was going to clear me to land, but uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, Mauritius, yeah, so QH, it can be switched off. Now, does the QH says, obviously it will tell you to switch off, but does it actually remark anything about the low fuel situation? Off the top of my head, I, I um, can't remember, there's no memory items associated with it. Right, approaching the final approach fix in one mile. I'm actually looking at a little look myself. Hydraulic, overheat. So, oh, okay, actually, you check the hydraulic quantity. Pressure. Yeah, it's still pressurizing, absolutely fine. Yeah, you just turn it off as long if it's greater than 3,300. Right, fine approach, fix 2,000 feet, no flags, altitude checks, no flags. We'll wait down to 4 miles. Height check at, uh, oh, where's the altitude distance cross checks on here? There isn't any. There isn't a single one. Interesting. Well, we're visual, and I see three whites. We'll keep descending for now, then. Approaching four miles, gear down. Flap 15. And... Matching the speed, landing checklist. Start switches, recall, speed brake. That's what we know about. Oh, I can't arm that. Why is that not arming? Arm green light, landing gear down, three green, order brake is set to max. Flap 25, missed approach altitude is... Ah, uh, 4,000 feet. Set, and flap 40. Target 2, Sierra Mike, on runway 01, wind 010 at 13, clear to land. Runway 01, clear to land, Alpaca 2, Sierra Mike. Flaps 40, green light, lights are on, checklist complete, 4,000 feet, 1.5 tonnes, we've got 1.1 for fin red, so we could we could still go around if we were to go around. Now I'd be going a media straight away. Right then, disconnecting order throttle, disconnecting order pilot, three whites. So we're going about a thousand feet per minute. Don't care. Don't destabilise yourself now. Speed. <laughs> I've got I've got flat 40 here on the thrust. That's a nice acceleration from the PMDG. Two reds, two whites. I'm going to actually recycle the flight directors. Checked. Take the first exit to help ATC. Continue. Spencer Marshall Tower, good evening from Speed. Delta 441 on the VOR 400. approach for one, one, runway 1. Creation, back to 62, flat 40. Tad high again, three whites, correcting. Continue approach your number two. Trying to. Traffic at Santa. Uh, Actually, it seems very low from what I would expect it to be. Delta 401, expect runway back ahead. 100. Delta 441, number two for the runway. We actually have the uh, traffic in sight. Check. Yeah. Those hold the altitude, don't fly not long. Down, speed brakes up. Continue the approach, Delta 441. Reverses. 83%, we'll make Bravo. Right, catch two zero, Mike. 80. After one exit, taxi to the apron via Bravo. Uh, okay, Bravo to the apron, up back at two zero, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome down to Santa Marta in Colombia, alive in one piece. Wow, that was fun. <laughs> Tell you what, I like to be in these situations in the simulator and not in real life. And the passengers would never know. <laughs> come on, PMDG, don't give me a runway or a taxiway excursion now. Oh, come on. Oh, well, I'm going a bit on the grass. There's nothing I can do. This is the crap turning circle of the PMDG. It's it's bonkers. I've, I've not even got full left. This thing could turn in a dime in the real aircraft. It just can't in the sim. There we go. Uh, 
around, <laughs> fuel sloshing forward in the tanks. Right, it worked out well. And 1.3 tons. Look, didn't even need to declare a mayday. <laughs> there we go. That was interesting. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. We've not exposed ourselves to one of these situations in the sim, but uh, it was good to discuss with you. Uh, I don't think there's any free stands, but uh, I'll ask our pack of two zero Mike. Is there any free stands? If not, I'll log off now. Uh, two zero Mike, you can use the stand uh, six alpha or number two. Uh, number two. Thanks the ATC our pack of two zero Mike. Bye bye. Two zero Mike terminated to three zero seven. Welcome to Santa Marta and have a good night. You too, thanks, bye bye. Excellent, we'll just log off here so I could take any other stand. Uh, we'll get the APU started. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was good. And it was it was great to discuss here. You know, 1.3, not comfortable at all. Um, you know, I would have made the minimum fuel cool as we discussed. You know, well done to the controllers. They were struggling. Um, uh, but, you know, they, I don't think they used to have that amount of traffic. But it's not an easy, what have I done here? There's not an easy airport to get a lot of traffic into. Uh, but they, they got us down and in here. I think the estimated approach time was a little bit off, you know, but not by far. Uh, as I said, we've we've landed here. And in real life, you would not need it to have made a Mayday call because we've landed here with our uh, Finres intact. Now, I think the electric hydraulic pumps overheating's come on a little bit too early. I think it's usually around around 550, 600 kilos. I think that was a bit premature from the PMDG. I'm going to double check that in the manual. It is quoted, I think, the figures. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're down here. We've not cheated. We've not added fuel. I don't like doing that at any time on a sim. Uh, but yeah, it was an interesting discussion point. And this happens uh, every, probably not every day in the world, but certainly annually. There'll be several aircraft that declare Mayday fuel, several that declare minimum fuel. Uh, these, these situations do happen in real life. Jacob, next time I don't think I should have both the stream volume up and ATC volume up. Having you talking over yourself due to delay was interesting. Yes, it was very busy. Uh, and it's hard to get the volumes right as well on the sim. So sorry if you uh, couldn't hear anyone. Right, uh, AP's on the bus. Just do the rest of the clean up here before we shut the engines down. Uh, <laughs> lovely. Uh, steady. Flight director's off. 4,100. Water brake to off. Braking was good. The performance was realistic with Max Auto. Uh, 2000 all out off at that stage. There we are. We can shut the engines down now. Welcome to Santa Marta, Colombia. Got a little bit past the stop there. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know why. I was about to ask, why didn't I get any marshalling? It's because I forgot to request the gate in GSX. Oh, dear. Yes, I was too busy worrying about other things. Right, requested boarding. Let's use Avianca. Thanks to the service, Avianca. She's in the default beverages. Yeah, this is freeway scenery. Uh, yes, do I want to close the flight? We'll see how we scored. I wonder if it'll penalise me for being low on fuel. APU flame out. Nah, it's all good, it's all good. There we go. Anyway, let's have a little discussion about that. Um, I'm only going to call it the one sector today because I wasn't planning any of that. and I was hoping to be... Airborne now for the second sector. There was a lot of delays there. Uh, I didn't start the replay as well, but I was busy. There we go, and we've started deboarding the passengers. Um, let's have a look here then. Differential thruster braking not needed. Next challenge finding the parking. Brilliant, Stefan Haynet. Rosie, that was probably a uh, properly enjoyable stream. Bravo, Skip. Well, thank you very much. I hope you found it interesting. As I said, we'll we'll discuss just before I go the, the process we go through in real life, which are pretty much applied in the sim. The only difference was. Uh, request ground power, yes. The only difference uh, from here and and the difference between real life is, is I didn't make the minimum fuel call to ATC morely because I just don't think in, in the VATSIM world well, they're sort of thinking, oh, we're not going to give you priority. You know, you should have bought more fuel on a busy event. But in reality, yeah, that's the only difference I would have done. Uh, David said, would the pump overheat be logged in the maintenance log? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd have put that in. Uh, and then, yeah, so someone has said, would this be reported? Absolutely. So any minimum fuel call, which, as discussed, I would have made, that would require a, a safety report as well. Definitely a phone call. But in this situation, let's say this happened in real life. We did this flight from A to B. The weather, as you can see, is perfect. We would have taken standard fuel. And let's imagine we got there and the runway was blocked for whatever reason. A Cessna landed and the nose wall got bust and they need to tow it off. And ATC said, right, Alpaca 2, Sierra Mike, your estimated approach time is in 20 minutes. The runway is going to be closed. And we'd look at it and look at our 
reserve fuel. Okay, yeah, 1.7. Our final reserve is is 1.1. We don't need to necessarily make that minimum fuel call. But let's say if they gave us an estimated approach time which was quite close to our minimum fuel, we would make that minimum fuel call. Remember, the minimum fuel call is a declaration that, that look, we are based on the information you're given you've given us we're going to land with our final reserve intact however any changes to the current clearance which could potentially increase our fuel burn will result in a, a mayday fuel call this is the last, last line of defense of ATC and AC will take that call very seriously uh, but yeah um, Jacob says next time I don't f oh yeah I've heard, saw that comment already uh, Rory really interesting stream you're most welcome I hope you're doing well sir and uh, I hope you, you well you did say you found it interesting which is good tomorrow the second sector from Australia to Bogota yes don't forget tomorrow I will be streaming at 8.30 in the morning if you're interested uh, if you press space it will straighten out the drone cam Ooh, but that's looking at the wrong point but thanks for that didn't know that Put it back down again. Um, Tamanga, don't forget to put the overheat pump in the maintenance log as well. Uh, Mike, excellent flight up way past my dead time with a work day tomorrow, but the approach was too exciting. Oh, very good. Well, I'm glad you found that interesting. So, you know, I've not covered this in a tutorial. I can do in the future. But just to, to remind you what crew in real life would do if they're exposed to that situation, what I would do. So, first thing is, is to... The first is to get uh, delay information from ATC and we do that by requesting estimated approach time so Alpaca to Ceramite we got an estimated approach time which was actually a duration wasn't it 10 to 15 minutes and based off that information we committed to Santa Marta now that's the first step okay the next step if required is if your estimated approach time increases if they get when Alpaca to Ceramite your new estimated approach time is actually 15 minutes later and you see right based off 15 minutes later we're going to land with more than your final reserves. We'd make the minimum fuel call. The minimum fuel call is just telling ATC, look, based on one, our new instruct, instruction, we are going to land with our final reserves intact, but any changes to the clearance, we will have to declare Mayday. Now, my last question, make sure you've been listening in chat. When do we declare Mayday fuel? When would I go Mayday, Mayday, Mayday fuel, Alpaca 2, Sierra Mike? When do I make that call? Airplanes are finished at 8.30 UK time. That is correct in Australia. Excellent. You've got it, Domino Mosina. When you land below Finres. Below Finres. When you land with less than 30 minutes remaining. And that is your last line of defence. And the, the good news is with that call, if you declare Mayday fuel, ATC has a lot more flexibility as to do what they want to do with you. They will give you directs to shortcuts, to any airport they might even give you vectors towards a military airport if it's convenient you need to land instantly or anything like that as well uh, but yeah it, it's the declaration is, is really important it just gives so much more flexibility to ATC but yeah if you're ever having to make a mayday fuel call that's basically telling ATC you are landing with less than 30 minutes of fuel remaining now the fuel overheat I think usually happens a little less. I need to look that up in the manual off the top of my head. We had it about 700 kilos of fuel, I think. I think it's a bit less in reality. But yeah, that is realistic. The fuel is cooling the electric hydraulic pumps. And as it drops below a certain level, the electric hydraulic pumps will start overheating. And I have spoken to uh, a captain years ago who had had to make a, a Mayday fuel call out, completely outside of his control. And he did get the electric hydraulic pumps overheating. So yeah, it is um, it is serious, but these situations are rare. As you saw today, we took minimum block fuel. We held at 22,000 feet for about 20 minutes. We descended, we got really long vectors, and we still landed with our fin res intact because we committed we used our contingency fuel and our fuel to divert to our alternate to land here would i have committed to santa marta in real life a 1700 meter runway with one runway available and lots of aircraft probably not i would have gone to barraclina but uh, hey that's why we run decision making processes so i hope you found that interesting further questions i'm happy to answer in the comment section as well on that some events <laughs> learning point take lots of extra fuel <laughs> and not exposure operation to such things but these do happen in real life and the situation is not nice when you have that level of fuel and your destination the weather's not perfect or it's really busy or something's happened you know i'd only really be committing to a destination in this situation if it has two runways or multiple approaches available it's uh, it, this is what we're trying to deal with in these situations uh apple play says if you have a mayday do you squawk 7700 no that's really the squawking 7700 is 
let's say you're dealing with a situation you can't contact ATC, for example, a rapid depressurization. That's one time we would set squawk without instruction. Unless ATC specifically tell us to, we wouldn't set it. The only situation, as I said, is rapid depressurization where it's part of the profile. The first officer does set the squawk 7700. Um, no, no replay there, Mehmet, so I didn't uh, time it. And I do apologise because I was planning a second sector. But based on the fact that we were delayed getting in here, it's super busy on VATSIM and another hour and 20 minute flight time. And I'm streaming in less than sort of uh, eight, eight hours. Um, I, I don't really have the time, so... Do apologize apologize for that but i'll update the video title as i said it was quite interesting to to show you guys that as well and i think you you enjoyed it too and it was good to expose myself in fact one of our recurrent sim training sessions we do this we sort of expose crew to a situation we keep upping the estimated approach time until they made to make a decision to either divert or commit so yeah very interesting to uh to to, to show you that to, to you guys it's good to refresh my knowledge on, on all the procedures as well. Anyway, we'll uh, call it a day. Um, as I said, yeah, live tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning in Australia. So if you're in Australia watching this now, I'll see you in about uh, eight hours time, 8.30 flying from Darwin to Cairn. I need to learn how to pronounce that for the start of the stream. Uh, Jessica, thank you for the 23 months and Tom hates cuts for 17 months as a member. Really appreciate the support and I hope you're keeping very well. Right then, guys, look after yourselves, and hopefully I'll see some of you tomorrow morning in the UK. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Mark, before before I log off, let's do my new Sky. See how I scored. Ah, oh, 10 out of 10. Look at this. No problem. Full score on new Sky. <laughs> great, great touchdown. Declared a, an emergency with plenty of fuel remaining. <laughs> let's have a look. How many times? How many times did I go around the hold, actually? hard to see here. One, two, three, four. Four lines plus really long vectors with standard fuel. Yeah, that's what we got exposed to there. Anyway, I lost money. Yeah, there was only 57 passengers I could board. I, there was, I couldn't set any more than that. I think there was no demand. But yeah, look how late we landed. Half an hour late. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it. Look after yourselves and I'll see you soon. Cheerio! Yes, I'm done for the day, but let's go. Come on, Jim, to the bar. Bye.